Ooh, wait for my face to appear from the ether. There we go. Hi, hello. I am your androgynous android game show host from the future, Nathan Blades. Uh, we're not in VTuber mode today. Welcome to the Neon Caster Twitch channel. Uh, hello, hello. Hello, Nathan's face. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hi, hi. Hi, Captain Hurricane. I hope you are having a fantastic evening. Um, we are here for another session of Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk Book Club where we uh, play a wide variety of video games in the cyberpunk genre and discuss them in terms of themes, any ideas that we could take away from them to inspire our own work, and then ultimately what cyberpunk means to that game in particular. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. Um, I, I have a special guest uh, with me. Not a special guest, you've been on the show a thousand times before. But uh, everybody give a warm welcome to Tom. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I've been looking forward to this. I've played nothing but this game for basically all this week. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. It was um, it's interesting uh when when the game kind of because I think the oh hey Queeks, good evening, good evening. Uh, wasn't this mentioned by another viewer in one of my streams? Uh, maybe I think that might have been the case. It might have been Tom himself. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, when when this game released in English because it's been available in Korean and maybe Japanese for a little while. Um, you immediately linked me it like on uh, like the 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 promo video of it on a uh, on on the Steam Tom, mm -hmm. and I listened to that uh, anime jazz uh, opening with the kind of like psychological thriller body horror visuals, and was like, oh yes delicious this is a, a thing that nathan blades would very much enjoy uh so yeah yeah from there i was already in i've played a little bit of the game already um just to make sure it will run on my machine and all of that jazz uh but from where we're going to be starting in the game it'll be uh relatively uh early on so we with the the opening like hour of the game will be skipped but it's not necessarily missing much in terms of explaining what the game is and the story and everything so you'll be able to catch up y'all yeah, watching it um the description of the game uh by the designers so like the steam page is thus uh may you find your book in this place combat between the guests and the librarians breaks out as if it were on a stage defeated guests turn into books and the library grows onwards and eventually get your hands on the one singular perfect book which is an accurate description of the game of something that happens in the game but i don't think it is a very like accurate description of really what the game is about um would you like not to kind of explain it. what you feel yeah. what the game is about yeah i'd love to so it it is literally a straight up uh, successor to the fantastic lobotomy corporation but mm -hmm. distinctly less stressful um it's very much a game about managing scps and generally being horrible as HR to all your employees who are getting massacred while you're trying to gain energy. Um, mm -hmm. So it's massive, <laughs> ma massive spoilers for Lobotomy Cork all across this game because it, it refers to it pretty much directly and all the characters are from it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uh, lots of a lot of the games very much the development of the city around the library, um, mm -hmm. which I really quite like the way it does it, which I won't spoil too much because obviously it's great to watch it play out. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, very good very good yeah uh just checking yeah 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 yeah. audio and everything is working good uh please do let me know that if, uh, if uh, audio is working okay and everything i've just noticed that my uh that the uh twitch chat in the video in the stream is acting interestingly give me a second to test audio is cool cool uh for where for some strange reason creeks's message is just uniquely indented but that's fine um it was bugging me but it's fine it's fine nothing go wrong nothing go wrong uh yes it is a it's, it's interesting that it's um uh, a direct sequel to a game in an entirely other genre ah the length of the name right 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 we learn things every day um yeah it, it's interesting that it's a sequel to a game in an entirely other genre because obviously people have different relationships to different genres i'd, I'd heard of lobotomy corporation previously and knew it was kind of like a worker placement manager me stress game and i was kind of like that sounds great not for me not for me but this being a uh a, a both 
very, very tabletop inspired. It's it's inherently a deck builder with additional dice rolling to do bits and pieces. You could really run it as a proper board game with the way that the game works mechanically, I think. Um, so surprisingly, it's super different, even though the narrative is almost literally a sequel. Uh, it does make me wonder, because I'm sort of having, I've watched a little bit of Lobotomy Corp um, footage on YouTube in lead up to doing the stream, because I was kind of like, maybe I should like learn a little bit about the world if it's so directly important um but i do wonder if this game would make sense for people who have not played at any lobotomy corporation at all maybe it manages to do it all as references but without necessarily ruining the story um to talk a little bit about the story because we're not going to see the initial thing um we i guess we play as uh this specific kind of uh oh gosh I know his name, but he's also forgotten his name because his name's Christian Roland. Eric. Roland, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, we play as Roland, who is a, a a cyberpunk kind of staple of being a, a fixer. Fixers usually in cyberpunk fiction are the kind of like go betweens. If you need a thing, I can go get it. Uh, if you need a contact, I've got the hookup kind of thing. And he's uh, very jaded at his job, finds himself one day in another world, like he's been isekai Is this game an isekai? Sort of, yes, yeah, sort of, no. Technically, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yeah, um, and in another world, which is a gigantic, infinitely expensive library. And the uh, main librarian, Angela, is like, I've summoned you here uh, to work for me. And Roland is like, hell no, I already had a job to do in real life. And so Angela snaps his fingers and then his limbs are immediately torn off, setting the tone of this game quite distinctly. Um, Very but, old mm, 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 mm. Uh, But she's a benevolent god and has also and then immediately reinstated all of his limbs. And is like, hey, I won't, you know, destroy you uh, in incredibly painful ways if you work for me as a librarian to receive guests. And he's like, what does that mean? And she's like, hey, uh, I'm going to invite terrible people to my library um, so they can maybe, hey, thank you for the follow, Lady Veride, so I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to invite terrible people to my library and it's your job to receive them, um, uh, which means fighting them to the death. Uh, and if they die, they become books which fulfill my library. And then hopefully one day, uh, somebody we murder uh, will be the perfect book and this whole charade will end. But until then, the slaughter must continue. Uh, what does it mean if they do escape my wrath? Well, they might find a book that could give them uh, the kind of knowledge that would get them untold riches. Uh, on the kind of assumption that anybody who goes into this library is clearly motivated by greed and therefore doesn't deserve to live, which is an opinion. <laughs> It's, it's quite nice how the little cutscenes uh, do vary the justifications for people going into the libraries, whether it's greed, insanity, or mm. there's certainly a few like people who are just running away from something and this was their only option. So no, there's definitely some very nice, uh, dubious levels of what you're up to and uh, mm. whether they really knew what they were getting into before uh, terrible and things happened to them. It definitely shares that with uh, Lobotomy Corporation because mm. um, that game is all kind of about uh putting yourself as a, somebody who's in a position of power um really not valuing human life uh for a variety of reasons and that seems to extend to this in a in the same way but different <laughs> um you know you you're 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 just do, you're just doing your job it doesn't even you recognize that the thing that you're doing is awful but you're just following orders stares mm. into camera um so this game's politics i think in a similar way to uh, to lobotomy corporation are quite pointed um lobotomy corporation is very very an anti-capitalist video game even if it doesn't want to directly say as such mm. ah no it's text it's text with how some of that goes <laughs> But yes, uh, before we get into the game proper, uh, we like to think of a couple of ideas about the themes we expect this game to have uh, going in. And we've already talked about that a little bit. Um, uh, playing uh, with the idea of uh, very obviously dubious morality. You're killing people but only so many of them deserve it. 
it in immediate quotes, you know, like her. How, how much, who, who said that Angela has the privilege to go take lives like that? Who knows? <laughs> she clearly, she's clearly very good at it. <laughs> hmm. Um, I, I, I mean, uh, the, one of the things I know we're going to be running into is the discussion of the world outside of the library and how much yeah. of a dystopia it can get, I guess. Oh yeah, there's a distinctly very dystopian theme running through all of it. Um, and it does give you quite a good idea of the structure um, through all the cutscenes and things. Hmm. And any other like themes? Like, a th is there a particular third key theme? Hey, Jonas! Thank you so much for visiting the channel. Jonas Goonface is an incredible artist. Um, uh, they do they do cool work. Go read God Shaper. Uh, thank you for thank you for joining us on the channel. Hi, hello. Um, I too want to become a book when I get defeated in life <laughs> for sure, for sure. Hi, well, good evening, good evening. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day as well. But yes, uh, any th th additional themes that you, you might want to raise before we get into this thing? I think one, I can't remember who the quote that talked about technology so far advanced, maybe akin to magic, but there's definitely mm. that sort of weird level of where there's ridiculously high-tech stuff and talk of singularities and things that sort of back this modern society that the is goes on in the city, but some of it is just like, yeah, but pretty much mm -hmm. that fine line between tech and magic I think and also it's unreliability mm. fantastic so we've got playing with the idea of very obviously dubious morality you're killing people but only so many of them deserve it discussion of the world outside of the library and how dystopian it can get and hyper advanced technology so much of it bleeds into magic and how dangerous it is all right, good, good, good. Um, our audio levels are set. We have our theme set. Uh, we have the video game. I'm just gonna go and uh, boost the volume of that video game so we'll be able to hear it when we skip over. I think it was about there, that was a good fit. And we're gonna confirm the exit. And we're gonna uh, move over, let's go. Okay, okay, fantastic. Uh, this is uh, both a um, card-based combat RPG and a visual novel, uh, so we're going to be doing uh, all the voices as we go. Oh, no, 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 not a new game. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Continue. There we go. There's only one save file, annoyingly. <clears throat> but there we go. Uh, please let me know um, what the volume of this is against our voices and if I need to continue to adjust it. Um, yeah, we can... We, we play as Roland. Roland is a very tired-looking gentleman. Uh, can hear us fine. Fantastic. Now, before I forget, there was a way of changing our costumes. This is a list of key pages. Ah, yes. Owned. So you're right in the top right in librarian info. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, should be able to... Uh... Ah. Battle symbols. Combat pages can jump to the librarian from the key page tab here. Okay, so we can customize our librarian. Clearly very important before we even mm. see, before we even get into the game at handy, we need to determine exactly uh, what man's looks like. Oh, and he has a... the prefix, Angela's. <laughs> Angela's servant, Roland. <laughs> yeah, Library cause... newbie. Because you do unlock a lot of librarians as it goes on, so mm. you've got a nice little uh, thing about because they all shout little things in combat as well. So yes, although these ones are set for the main character because the yeah, main character yeah. can't uh, we can't change any of these bits and pieces. Just his title, okay. I guess there's a different way to change his outfit. Uh, yeah, so the outfit will be determined by the key page that you equip. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is. Uh, based on the people that you've murdered. Yes. Um, some are specific people, um, and others are just generic mooks. Um, mm -hmm. And equipping them usually changes the character's outfit. Uh, uh -huh. and, I, I uh, like well, Lenny's outfit, so let's... Uh, shows selected... Oh, and each, each outfit has like a deck of cards that goes with it. Yeah. So, and this is the current key page. 
press the equip button. Where is the equip button? Uh, it's in the it's the backwards tick on the. Oh, uh, why is it backwards? Okay. Oh. <laughs> there you go. You now have raggy clothing. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Roland looks like he uses LinkedIn every day. Well, not now. Not now that he's in the scarf and carrying like a pocket knife. Oh, uh, bad Harry Potter cosplay. Mm -hmm. But because we've given him a new outfit, his uh, loadout of uh, weapons has also changed. So we need to uh, equip him with specific moves. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can I can explain this. Uh, at the start of every match, you draw a hand of cards and you have three action points. Uh, that big, call an ambulance, but not for me, for sure. <laughs> uh, that big number at the top left, the one that's a zero, um, is how much energy uh, the card costs to use. And uh, each card has uh, one to three actions that goes with it. Uh, blue actions are defensive ones. That like squiggly arrow is dodging and the blue shield is clearly shielding. But there's also different types of attack damage that you can do. Uh, you can do slashing damage, which is that crescent. Uh, you can do bashing damage, which is that kind of like shockwave. And then you can do piercing damage, uh, which is the kind of like pulse symbol there. Uh, for each of these uh, different attacks that you're doing on a card, uh, it does a little dice roll of the amount of damage it will do. Uh, so for this light attack, for example, um, the first attack that you do when you use it is a piercing of two to three, and then a bashing of one to four. Uh, you want to roll high. High numbers are good. Uh, sometimes there will be additional kind of effects. So for example, Backstreet's dash here only does one attack, uh, but it makes the enemy bleed so that they will lose HP while they're bleeding. That kind of thing. Um, you have a deck of nine cards and they are drawn randomly. I think you get four by default and there are yeah. probably things that change that. Hmm. So we have a handful of options here to kind of build our deck for, uh, for Roland. Uh, do you have any preferences of what we should add for our starter deck? So I usually, I don't know whether it's actually good or not, opt for one zero, uh, three ones, two twos and two threes. Mm -hmm. and we want a uh, defensive one. Zero is kind of useful just because you effectively gain one each turn. So if you mm -hmm. play a zero, you gain one, so you'll be able to afford your more expensive cards. Uh, mm -hmm. But gut harvesting's pretty solid. Uh, oh, I've heard that gut harvesting is very good. Mm. Uh, dirty blow, and then we'll take two gut harvestings. Oh, we have room for one more. Uh, oh, I can't the count count. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, probably another two then. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, we want a mid. We want we want plenty of mid range. Yeah, um, uh, the three to six. Cool of the cards also is rarity. Uh, mm. Uh, so purple cards are rarer, I guess. Yeah, I think there's orange and it might go up to red. I've just got to the stage in the game where I have got a four. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, so you can save favourites, but if, yeah. once you put them in there... Um, well, if we're going to be build. changing our outfits a lot, we might as well assign uh, Roland's deck. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, so that's always set, and so even if we change his outfit, we still have the default deck that he is using. Cool! Uh, and then there is the library, which is where we do our missions. I think we just click here to go and see the available missions, right? Uh, uh, so Invitation will bring your missions ah, up. Right. Um, this is, um, yeah. So each mission requires a specific card. Uh, or books, rather. Uh, the books that you get are from defeated enemies. So we got the Book of Rats from the tutorial fight, and we have one handy. So we're going to click that to say that, hey, we've got a Book of Rats available. And then we're going to send the invitation because we've met all our requirements to summon a fight. And we're going to get going. And then it's going to load up some story. Ah. Hello, McHarryan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And hello, Athelo Luna. Thank you for joining us. Hey, good evening. Good evening. I just realized, while it's amazing that this game is actually fully voiced, it's fully voiced in Korean and actually a nightmare to talk over. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, go and lower all the voices to none. 
Mm. There we go. That makes that a little easier for us. Oh, just got to get away without having to voice out then. <laughs> <laughs> every, every single dystopian future becoming a bit more your. Yeah. I mean, if 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 genuinely you're not up for doing voice acting today, that's <laughs> no, fine. No, I'm entirely kidding. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I assume this is Fixer One. It was relatively deep. Foiled again. I didn't go through the trouble of becoming a fixer to do mundane chores like this. Oh, you know how yeah. it is. Only a select few of us get to rise up in the ranks. Do you want to take the named character? Yeah, we'll do. But still, we might see the light one day if we start with smaller tasks, don't you think? I envy your optimism, Finn. But a request like, please find my lost cat before night falls is seriously not it. And garbage offices get garbage requests. Yeah, Finn. You probably had better things in mind when you became a fixer. You know, a bigger field to play on. I'm sure I can move to a nicer office or become an associate fixer someday if I keep working hard. Then I might. That's odd. There's an envelope in my pocket. It says the invitation. Uh, what is this game about? Althea Luna asks. Well, um, we are people who work for the library, which is an interesting metaphysical space, and we invite terrible people uh, to come in so they can maybe find fame and fortune and treasure among the books, but only if they survive our violent wrath. And so our current victim, Finn here, uh, just got our invitation to the library. It smells, smells fishy. Can't overlook something like this. Besides, if what's written on the invitation is true, those books would be of interest to several associations. It is interesting, but we don't exactly know what's in the library, right? We should report this to the office first and take care of it formally. I ain't about to feed the garbage office that won't feed me. We're going first if you don't want to. And so they take the invitation off of Finn. <laughs> <laughs> to go in themselves. They call themselves fixers. Do you happen to be friends with them? Well, look, assuming all fixers know each other is... It's like picking two random pedestrians and hoping they know each other. Your question is basically asking these two strangers, you're both humans, so you must know each other, right? You get what I mean? <sighs> I should expect to see many different kinds of fixers if what you're saying is true. Pretty much. I get a little bit of input lag, okay? like a hack frame yeah. hanging occasionally. Oh, you yeah. do as well. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very much the the game. Ha the transition's not that smooth from that. Right. Those right. scenes. Because I, I was kind of like, oh my god, is my game breaking? But uh, it's it's the it's it's the game, not my machine. Oh god, Adachi from Persona and Ray from Evangelion together at last. It, look, I mean, the character design in this is very anime. It's definitely on the nose as to what it wants to be. Um, well, this game just got a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> I think Roland's personality is a lot more on the level than Sayadachi, but maybe, yeah. maybe on the other side of having to do a couple of these murders, maybe not. <laughs> uh, but yes, this is the pre-battle screen uh, where we get to see uh, all of the stats of our enemies. Um, it's it, because this is kind of like a board game in its combat scenarios. It gives you actually a large amount of information off the bat. It lets you know exactly what moves they use. It lets you know their health and their stats, and it lets you know about their kind of like strengths and weaknesses. Every enemy uh, has a different kind of uh, resistance or weakness to various types of attack. So for example, uh, this, this uh, unit is weak to piercing damage, uh, as is this one. And we would actually have the opportunity to go and edit our deck to uh, specifically build it as a counter um, to the people we're facing. So we could theoretically, for example, build several different decks that specialize in different types of damage and then pick one as appropriate and things like that. But because this is still like a tutorial mission and we are way stronger than the enemy, look how much like uh, health we have. We have 42 health while they have 10. Uh, we could deal 10 damage in one attack in one turn if we really wanted to. Uh, so this isn't going to be too stressful. Also, the music slaps. The music in this game oh, is it really does. good. Oh, it does. It's so fitting. We've actually reused a few bits from Lobotomy Corp as well. Mm. But... I heard a couple of remixes as well. I listened to one of the uh, Abnormality themes, which we'll begin running into. And it shares mm. the kind of alert theme from Lobotomy Corp, which I thought was very nice. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be using this battle theme in the tabletop session, by the way. Mm. Oh, yeah. It just yeah, works so well. Mm. 
yep. uh, changes up several times over the course of the battle from mm. the turn as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so uh, a unique aspect to this game is emotion state. Um, the enemies that you fight get change emotion depending on whether they are winning or losing fights. And the more emotional they are, the better rewards they drop. Uh, so it is in your best interests to either uh, horrendously punish the enemy so they are scared or let them think that they're winning so they feel cheerful and defeating them that way, which is incredibly fucked up. Um, <laughs> I can't help that fighting or at least dangerous librarians makes me think of Welcome to Night Vale. This game also has a lot of kind of like an eldritch horror to it as well, so oh, that's yeah. not a terrible comparison. So yeah, uh, killing enemies when they're emotional uh, makes them feel different. We get we get little quotes at the start of everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, one thing that's worth pointing out as well, if you look, there's a little number next to your character's portrait, right bottom right and bottom left. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you uh, your emotions go up, you get bonuses, mm -hmm. which are also yeah. Ah, so those like fill up. Yeah. So you get more stuff, but the enemies do tend to get. Uh, stronger as well. Um, mm, mm, mm. I don't know if you want quick mode on or off for this. Uh, I, I forget whether this is telling me the prompt to turn this on or whether... So if you, yeah, if it's off, it should show you the dice rolls. Cool, fantastic. Because uh, we, we do want that for at least the first couple of fights. Yeah. So currently we are doing initiative because this is, like as I say, a tabletop game. Um, every character rolls a speed die. Theirs goes from one to two. Mine goes from one to four. Um, if you have a higher speed die, you act first. And uh, if you are attacking, you can um, get in the way of attacks of people who have lower speed dice than you. Uh, because it's just one, we just have one person, um, the speed doesn't matter so much, but when we have multiple people, it matter more. Also, you can tell that we're the bad guys because in a traditional like RPG, we would be on the right side of the screen and the allies would be on the left-hand side. Like if you're thinking like Paper Mario, mm. So, yeah. yeah. Are we the baddies? <laughs> uh, we, rolled, we rolled a three, so we get to go first and we get to see uh, who's attacking whom. Um, we gain, we start with three, like, action points and we gain one new action point every turn. So we can uh, be conservative, maybe, and go for one of these, or we could just go out, like, full force and start chomping dudes immediately which to be honest these guys are both dodging huh one to four yeah no let's go for a kill yeah i think harvesting their guts is a good look mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so once we've assigned our moves uh we can initiate combat i'm used to being on the right side of screens in jrpgs uh yeah, maybe like um Final Fantasy IV had us on the right-hand side. So uh, they've already done their roll. They've rolled a four, which is actually really high, but because we're rolling three to six, we stand better odds. Let's see if we beat it. We rolled a six, and uh, they no longer have an evade, so, and they only have one HP left, so uh, later. They died and turned into a book. Did you see that? They just turned into a book. We get little bonus messages. Uh, at the end of every turn for outcomes. So now we roll again. And we've gained... Actually, that's weird. I'm, I'm surprised. So at the start of every turn, you gain one onto your maximum? Yeah. I think okay. It's... Oh, the sound's just gone very weird there. Uh... Ooh. The sound has gone weird for you. Uh, is that also weird for the stream? Uh, stream, do let us know if the audio is getting all funky. Stream sounds fine. Yes, okay, sounds fine. So it's just my side. Hmm. I assumed that getting one action point every turn would mean that because we did a three energy spell that this turn we would only have one energy. Some I'm surprised we start before. I think it's more generous at the start of the game. Ah, uh, uh, I it's... see. Well, then let's just harvest this dude's guts as well, huh? Oh, they rolled a five. That's very good. But we oh, beat no. it. <laughs> Too bad for them. Why do I have to die like this? My voice is as sultry as ever. Thank you, Mixarian. 
curtain call. Yes, because these are uh, battles on the on the stage. This is very theatrical. Mm. Enter them into the Dewey dead symbol system. Oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And then we get our rewards. Uh, the better we do, the more rewards we get. And uh, like our players can sometimes unlock bonus stuff. Neat. Um, so because we've got our rewards and everything, uh, we can now, <laughs> funnily enough, uh, burn some books. <laughs> So each book is essentially like a booster pack of cards. So to get new moves, we burn books that we get. Begrudging applause for the pun. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and each time we burn a book, we get a random selection of the potential things in the list. We need to keep at least one uh, because they are necessary for unlocking missions later on. Uh, so we're going to burn, I don't know, we're going to leave two remaining and burn four books. It's kind of wild that we, you know, invite people into the library, kill them, turn them into books, and then burn the books if they're not useful. Yeah. <laughs> it's grim, really, isn't it? <sighs> Fucked up, man. Uh, send those to Alexandria with the rest of the trash. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, yeah, uh, we, we gain... Uh, who isn't? Who is over Library of Alexandria? Um, we one of the tabletop RPG campaigns we streamed a while ago in the in the past, uh, Arcana Core, uh, which was very Persona inspired. Uh, one of our players is Personas, as it were, was actually the Library of Alexandria, <laughs> which was Shale Blade in the chat. Mood TBH, indeed, indeed. So now that we have some new cards. Uh, we might actually want to edit our deck if we wanted to. Um, I don't know if any of those number two... Ah, oh, Wallop dealing double sets of physical damage, I think, is better than that. Pierce and dodge. I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah. Put that in instead. We don't have that many pierce attacks, though. Hmm. I'm going to get rid of Dirty Blow and put in Thrust as well. That looks like a good set to me. Uh, I think there's also a way to like give our dude a hat if we want to. Uh, so some of the things you'll have to get there, some of the unlocks, which are basically um, used to your uh, your guys used to get on the bottom of your core for just working things. There was like mm. random mm. spawn chance. But on this, it appears to be by effectively... Um, getting achievements with certain characters um ah, so like gotcha. a list of items that you get um and some unique to some of the things you're fighting mm -hmm. so doing fights with special conditions will maybe unlock new fights for us yeah but it does not tell you them mm. you have to explore that's fine so we're going to be moving on to chapter two of this segment which we have the book for let's get going I assume uh, because this is like a continuation of the same story. Gotcha. Go I'll, ahead. I'll type in, yeah. Sir, they still haven't responded back to us. Something must have happened in that library. Plenty of fixes disappear without a trace. Whether they died or ran off, further lack of response means a violation of contract, and they're facing expulsion from my office. And there is too little evidence to back up your claim about this invitation. Adora appeared out of thin air when they signed the paper and they disappeared into that. Could be rich people shenanigans, or a wing experimenting with its singularity. Yin's office does not have any time to spare with things like that. I can still be a grade 9 fixer, but I can sense some things off about this. Oh really? How tragic that the good instincts of a grade 9 fixer are wasted in an R humble office. <laughs> Listen up, little frog in the well. In this city, insane events happen every second of the day, most of which you haven't even heard of. You won't have time to be feeling off about something when there's numerous other things that need your attention. If you can't present visible evidence right now, it ain't worth looking into. What about that envelope right in front of you, operator? They just made another one. Oh, hello, TV head. Good evening, good evening. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> what? You little brat trying to pull a cheap trick on me. 
I, I didn't do anything, I swear. Get out for a moment. Hey, this is Jan's office. Got a good lead this time. Lend me some cash so I can hire a few. No, seriously, I've got a good feeling about this. True, it can end up failing like you said. I can check just one more time if you want. I'm uh, not exactly fond of this method, but yeah, i got one guy fit for the job. Turning into reading materials before being thrust into a furnace is grounds for dismissal, if not done on personal time. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, both this game and Lobotomy Corporation is very intensely about uh, bad HR practices. So, yes. <laughs> it seems fixers must report to their office before they can even begin working. Uh, well, that's formally the case. I could bypass that since I ran a one-man office, though. Fixers aren't made any better than syndicates when it comes to greed. And it looks like this guy's trying to exploit a naive kid, too. Uh, Lobotomy Corporation is the prequel to this game. There's actually a real-time strategy worker placement thing that's kind of inspired by the SCP kind of like a school of eldritch identities. So this is a direct sequel to that. Even though the genre of this game is entirely different, what I know. So, this is the library. Yeah. Yon said we might even get sponsorship for an association if I succeed. I'll do my best! <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. You look literally 14. This is not going to go well for you. Uh, TV head says some Brazil-level bureaucrat shenanigans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Greetings, Fixer. I am Angela, the librarian of my role's namesake. Well, hello, Miss Angela. Hello, I'm Thin, a Fixer at Young's office. Is it true that I can find books containing lots of information in this place? Yes, of course. You were given invitation for that exact reason. May you find your book in this place. Look at that smile. Look at that crap-eating smile. And then we murder a child. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Danganronpa has well. nothing on this game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Angela, welcome to the Velvet Doom. <laughs> it is very similar energy, actually. Mm. <laughs> Finn says, I'm afraid, but I want to win. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we start with four. Okay. Uh, well, let's harvest, harvest some guts. small child's guts. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's going to attack and then going to... Ah! So if you win with preparation, you can restore light energy. Interesting. I've got bad news for it. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is cheering. Baby guts! Baby guts! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Rolling a three. Well, that's our low roll. So uh, goodbye to you. <laughs> uh, when you are, so you have a second HP meter. Uh, staggered is uh, what happens if you're counter hit. Um, if you run out of stagger HP, uh, you low, you no longer can act for one turn, and you take double damage from all attacks. So uh, later, kid. Oh, didn't die though. I'm just picturing the kid for the page master. Oh no! <laughs> Macaulay Culkin and bottle glasses. Uh, that would be wild. Like Macaulay Culkin goes into the library. Whoopi Goldberg just pulls out a gat and just ends that kid's life. That's the end of the game. Uh, so yeah, because uh, Finn got uh, staggered, doesn't get to roll for speed. Just doesn't act this turn. So even though we rolled run one, it does not matter. Uh, Finn is weak to thrust damage, so, uh, rip, kid. Nice knowing you. Yeah, Embrace yeah. Oblivion, Finn, will save you from the inevitable tournament arc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gut harvesting, otherwise known as, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. I I like this law. I like this law that our main character is specifically trying to get to the top of the corporate ladder by basically removing all competition. <laughs> uh, Roland is getting that bread. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> sat there following Bill Gates and uh, Richard Branson. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. It's not all that delightful to see such a young rookie fall like that, all things considered. You said yourself that our way is quite polite and fair before, didn't you? 
that most of the time people's lives are taken away by others without consent or agreement. Why are you pulling out now, coward? The library is different. People who enter this place have agreed to risk death to gain what they want. They even signed the paper to show such agreement. No coercion or compulsion is involved in this process. They make their own choice and pay accordingly. I, I need to make sure that Angela's voice is appropriately shitty. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, fair point. But still, it feels kind of dirty in a way. Continuous, enthusiastic dismemberment. Nothing personal, kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, each floor will present you with a certain assignments, and we've ticked those off. So then, once we've beaten all the assignments, we essentially get a boss battle. Yeah. Mm. And as we beat boss battles, like new people show up, and the game gets harder. Mm. So the, I like the actual in fluff ex explanation for us. The library starts off, and the chapters are named things like. Uh, urban legend and then mm. it sort of progresses up as it becomes more widely known the level of threat that the library is so mm. higher up the chain pay attention to it interesting well let's go and um, burn some books you know standard sounds like we need to alexandria at this place to be real if this game doesn't end with somebody burning the library to the ground i'll actually be kind of disappointed <laughs> um so now that we have some new cards why don't we go and uh update our boy roland actually let's change his outfit yeah we've got a few now yeah, yeah, yeah. let's turn him into finn or maybe yin They've actually got abilities on those ones as well. Oh, they have abilities. 50% yeah, chance to boost slash damage by one. Mm. When an ally dies, gain one strength next scene. Well, I have no allies. So uh, maybe we're going to be turning into this combat suit then. We're going to equip it. And that resets our deck. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Just catching up with chat. Uh, not that first, not the first reference to that, Queeks, but I doubt it'll be the last. Uh, you know, I was just thinking that, just like real life capitalism, except a little bit less dark. Uh huh. So, are our bosses also books, or is that how we get shelves? I, I, I think there'll be a whole thing of like other people who work within the library as we proceed. So, uh, we'll be we'll be finding that out as we go. Um, well, we have a better zero cost card now because we get to both dodge and attack, which is markedly better than this one. Um, let's see. One to five, two to three, one to two. I'll take that as a defensive. Uh, I like the double piercing damage. That's nice. Uh, I also quite like the mixed damage on that, so that's our threes. And then let's go for a couple of twos. Uh, Rack's Guide to Survival with the Dodges. Because we want to make sure we have a... I, I have a feeling having like three... Having like three defensive cards out of our nine. Three to four defensive cards feels... Yeah, it can be sensible. useful. Because uh, obviously defense does mitigate damage, but dodge does. I think it rolls again if it passes mm. the first test, if mm. I remember rightly. Mixed Damage. Great DJ name. <laughs> yes, I like that. Uh, struggle, two defends and a blow. Gain two protection next scene, which means we take less damage on the next turn. That's a very good defensive item. Um, we don't really have an offensive. Oh, we have Wallop. There we go. Fantastic. And then two Gut Harvestings, because that card is actually genuinely really good. It is uh, like one of the best early game cards. It's we're really going to good. save over Roland's deck. Fantastic. Then we're gonna uh, do the next fight. Ooh. Yeah. Thanks for the music. Oh. You seem to be doing your job meekly and well for somebody who complained so much. What else did you expect after giving to me in such a violent manner? Crazy bitch. <laughs> Heck, I was shocked hard. I find myself in the middle of nowhere. The first person I meet blows off my limbs. That she did. <laughs> I was lost at first, but I get the gist of receiving guests now that I've tried it a few times. Though, I do have a complaint. Complaint? 
Jeez, man. Again with that, sir. Can't say a thing. Yeah, you best not, motherfucker. Just tell me what you mean. I mean, well, it's kind of tough to receive all the guests alone. Guests arriving one by one I can deal with. When a whole group enters, the first thing that comes to mind is, how the hell am I supposed to fight all of them? You killed one of them in one turn. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a point where one person's no longer enough, right? It's only working right now because all we've been facing were minor syndicates and stuff. Mm -hmm. And not to be an absolute creeper friend, but you've got a great voice there. Voice acting is an honest tag for you, if I can offer a compliment. Thank you! I really appreciate it. I'm very new in my voice acting career. I've had a handful of uh, things that I've led my voice to. Uh, but yeah, I, I do a lot of tabletop RPGs as, I guess, a secondary form of income these days. Uh, so working on my voice and keeping my voice in good condition is actually super important these days. So it really does it really does cheer me up when people say that they like my voice acting. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and the whole buzz about heightening emotions. You said I can't just kill the S right away because of that. Hmm. What's that odd face hinting at? There is a way, technically speaking, although I'm not certain if it's for the best. You're joining the fights yourself? Maybe? No. There are entities that could be of help, however. Those entities are... The beings that used to wield tremendous strength and power, but are now too transient to maintain a physical form, hardly holding on to existence. I don't remember seeing any living being slivery other than you and me. They're asleep inside the books, where the perfect environment for them is simulated, along with librarians who will be of assistance to you. <laughs> the books are basically pokeballs. <laughs> I love the burning page bits rising into the air. The environment art looks great too. It's almost a shame that this game didn't come out when we were playing Arcana Core, because I'm oh, sure yeah. very big parts of this would heavily <laughs> inspire that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Librarians? Entities inside books? That's all you need to know about them for now. What matters more is that they could be useful for the library's growth. All right, let's say that's the case. How are those sleeping entities supposed to help us, exactly? You have to enter their books and free the librarians trapped within. I believe they're under the influence of the abnormality's powers for various reasons. So bookworms with a Y. You'll see, McSarian, you'll see. And since they're highly unstable, they won't easily trust us. You're basically saying we'll take us for invaders, then. Correct. If you can overcome all our deal ordeals presented by them, they will come to accept you. Instructions still unclear, ma'am. You said they're as mighty as wet paper now. Are you sure they'll give any help? We are not making the abnormalities received guests for us. If they can be understood and accepted, they will empower the librarians, directly or indirectly. Still too ambiguous, I've got to say. Anyhow, what you're saying is they'll present us with all deals, basically, and we have to overcome them to earn their recognition and borrow their powers. Entering books. Sounds like something out of a fairy tale. We'll need their power to heighten the emotions of our guests to the peak, after all. I wish you success in there. Sure, sure. Anything you say, ma'am. So let's fight an abnormality. Will I enter the Book of <laughs> Bloodbath? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes, I will. Let's go. Let's oh, go. The mood shift. The mood shift. And now we fight eldritch entities. Andrew is right. This place is bizarre. There are creepy looking blood clots all over the place too. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, video game. Are those giant eyes in the background? Marks of failure. You won't be any different. I don't want to face anyone. <laughs> it's like, ah, ah, ah. Ah, wait. So we're being so, so we're on the left now because we're being protagonists. Mm, mm. Uh, so the slight, mm. the slight differences with these guys, uh, they tend to have special rules attributed to them. So mm. there's stuff on the right hand side uh, for things that affect mm. um, this particular entity. Take uh, so one to five it. less damage from slash attacks. Lose three speed, boost the max value of block dice by three. Oh, hmm. So we're, uh, let's see here. What are you weak to then? You're reasonably weak to pierce. Maybe I can go for... You're attacking with one to four in defense though. So this is a pretty even roll. Hmm. Hmm. 
also, I like that they're immune to slash damage because they know how good Got Half the Sting is as a card. I'm mad. I'm angry. Okay. <laughs> I was staying quiet about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We'll do our best. All right, let's make this happen. Oh, I did. Uh, press this bar, I think. Oh. Oh, sorry, I had to dismiss that. Oh, I, I've done. I've done the thing though. Hold on. Yeah, we're good. We should be good. Is it? Am I? Um, is there like a the tutorial that I'm specifically? Uh, not sure. Try closing his card that he's got on. Yeah. Oh. not letting me how weird i uh, try reselecting the card again not sure what's going on though. oh the attack didn't fire i've lost the oh, no, card no, no. from my hand no it's still still up to fire oh Can yeah yeah on... still... do you have to click on the monster below oh right okay uh yeah, yeah, yeah. uh so it's only half listening you're reasonably weak to piss not what i said reasonably weak yeah. to pierce piercing yeah. attacks um I mean, I could call them thrusting attacks, but that's just as bad, really. Um, yeah, so this one has special resistance. It's cool. I understood this. This is fine. This is fine. You're tutorializing to me, but it's fine. Let's attack. Okay, so they roll it. Ah, so the, the maximum range on it is... Uh... Ah, yes. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Captain Hurricane. Have a good one. See you later. Uh, so hopefully we'll roll better. Four. Max damage. Nice. Oh, nice. Ah, uh, we can't beat that with our one to four, so we're gonna get counter hit. So when they defend higher than what we can attack, the difference is dealt back to us in stun damage. If I've activated my trap book, flips up the fountainhead of blood. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, do we know what attack you're doing, combat pages? Another sinking attack. Hmm. We only have slash attacks though, so we're just gonna have to kind of rock with it. But if we inflict bleeds, it might be really useful. So, uh. Worth a, worth a go? Also, the abnormality fight is very much more about managing it. Ooh, it rolled crap, and I'd be a good swing. Ooh, max damage. Let's go. We endured some of that. And we staggered him, so he's not going to attack this turn, and we can go ham. I feel like Rand books are plenty damaging without additional magic, yes. <laughs> if it was Pierce, taking Pierce damage would be taking the piss. Yes, yes, there we go. Uh, let's go for two sets of bashing damage. What was that? Ooh! <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. That was a good, good life lead we got there. Mm. We might be able to close this out, depending on what we get. Uh, slash and bite. What are you going with? Oh, this is an attack. Stagger if all attacks connect. One to three. Maybe I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be try being defensive on this one. I'm gonna do some dodging. Mm. You'll notice there's a bit more um, energy management in these fights. Mm. Well. I didn't restore to full in energy. Interesting. No, no. I dodged the attack. I blocked that attack. Ah, but we got counter hit there. Mm. Mm. You both rolled slow. What are you attacking with? Uh, still using sinking. Let's go for bite off. And hopefully we'll be able to land that crushing attack to finish the round. We're definitely more even match this time, huh? Oh, deflected. Hmm. Uh, hmm. What are you going for? Oh, depression. On hit inflicts six paralysis. Uh, uh, I, I would, I would prefer not, actually. 
Oh, so it's quite an interesting mechanic as it reduces uh, dice rolls on your cards that you use. Ah, that sucks. Absolutely mm. not. We're going to do uh, a two to six block and try and uh, get around that. I hate it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. I start to get blood splatters on me now that I'm taking damage. Uh, depression do be like that, though. Yeah. Uh, it is another all attack effects. I am weak to, to crushing damage, though. Yeah. Also, bear in mind you'll be taking penalties due to the three stacks of... Mmm. Um... The paralyzed. For the duration of the scene, whenever the character plays combat page, up to three random dice will have the maximum roll reduced by three. Okay. <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna dodge. Dodge? Oh, well, no, yeah. Ow, ow. Yeah, that hurt. And we got stunned, so now we just have to take damage this turn. Here's five health! We are so close to winning. What's he gonna do to you this turn? I don't get to attack this turn, do I? You do not, no. You can yeah. see what he's going to do to you in advance. Oh, I like the fact the eyes are open now as well. Oh! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no, it's bad, actually. It's a bad thing. Uh, and I get staggered if all attacks connect. But you can have a change staggered, fortunately. Mm -hmm. Please, high numbers. All right, fine. Am I still paralyzed? No, paralysis is worn off. <laughs> The speed doesn't actually do anything unless you've got multiple enemies. Mm. Um. We're going to go for pierce damage. And hopefully this takes us home. God damn it! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, it's... it's, <laughs> it's no! The, it's basically the really mean wake-up this fight occasionally. <laughs> it's like, oh wait, yeah, this fight is actually going to be difficult if you're going to... Uh... Yeah, I also clearly went in with uh, a bad deck to work with. Uh, let's see if we can block that and then come back with a... So... Yeah. I won't actually get it. Let's we'll see if we can uh, We'll make it through. Four is good. We might be able to make that work. Okay, and now we get to attack for free. There we go. Eat shit. Hey, got it. Nice, nice. Guess I should be thankful that monster was weaker than it used to be. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> You've suppressed bloodbath. Achievement <laughs> their That's a terrible problem. Uh, one assistant librarian has awoken. I now have access to new abnormality pages, and emotional level threshold is increased to two. So these are new cards that I have gained from defeating that abnormality. They seem to be like passives? Yeah, so they're special cards that turn up when you hit emotional levels um, mm. and they can be played in addition to the cards in your deck. Um, mm. So you don't actually need to put them in each library floor as you unlock abnormalities, gives you more of these. Um, they just fire automatically. So it's basically, oh, you'll get a choice of picking one. Um, mm, okay. And the it's sort of the mechanic for the fact that as the game goes on, generally the people you're fighting will have stronger decks than you. Mm -hmm. But because you've got abnormalities, it balances it out. Mm -hmm. Also, I enjoy that we've established that uh, part of this thing is that it's just a pool of blood, which will then summon hands to forcibly drown you in it. <laughs> also, I know specifically that that, inf that that text there, many hands float in the bath, there, the hands of the people I once loved is actually flavor text from Lobotomy Corporation. So I see how this all ties in together. I understand. I understand. So we've now unlocked a second player. Yep. Ray. And I believe we have the ability to customize them. Pimp your librarian. Well, okay. So because this is a game about uh, the blending between reality and fiction, I think that all the people that we put in this should be characters from Arcana Core. Uh, yep, no, I like that. I like so, that. because you're in the chat, you get to be the first party member, Sunichi. Uh, who is a library newbie. Uh, 
We've got to set the hairstyle. So we get to customize all these all these people, huh? What is the kind of hairstyle that you had? I'm slightly tussled messy from memory. Yeah. How sure. do we only get five? Oh, it might be because it's the female librarian. Ah! Oh, it's yeah. they're, they're, they're specifically oh, so gendered, are they? I don't know. I've not actually played about with it that much. Maybe face and expressions, possibly? Hmm. Not sure. Uh, face and expressions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the eyes look a bit more feminine, so I guess if this yeah. is a... Okay. Um, in that case, who do? Who? Wait, what character? What lady character from um, Arcana Core do we want to put here instead? Uh, is this Sabine? Is this Sabine kiss? I think it might have to be one. So yeah. Sabine Kissner, absolutely. Uh, she had quite long hair. With the ponytail, I forget. I have, I, I mean, I have the token art handy. I could just look. No, bad gender. Spray. Yeah, the fact that it's a gender lot sucks. Considering, considering like the character design in this, which is basically little chibi people, there's no reason for them to have gender locking for this. No. Uh, let me just pull up a picture of Sabine. Uh, yeah, Sabine has a big ponytail and short front legs. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Oh no, there is like, uh, I see. Uh, it's working now. I don't know why it wasn't working before. What the hell? Ah, oh, I like that one. Oh, it's crikey. I like that one. That's good. Uh, and we wanted the ponytail. And uh, she has uh, dark hair. There we go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Uh, my favorite part of cyberpunk is the strict gender binary. I know, right? Embarrassing. Genuinely embarrassing. I'm sad about that, actually. Mm -hmm. So unnecessary. And we get to pick what kind of faces is. That's pretty, I mean, pretty angry, honestly. Yeah, angry faces. Angry eyebrows. <laughs> can we, can we change this, this one, I guess? Uh, it's weird how it was kind of letting me select. Oh, there we go. When eyebrows set seven. And those eyes work for me, that's fine. This menu navigation is a little bit finicky, but we're getting, we're getting through. To be honest, I like the little, like, n narrow, frowny mouth. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Sabine Kissner was, was reasonably pale, as I recall. There we go. Uh, black and white character art, so she doesn't have an eye color. I, I, keeping them kind of like a uh, dot eyes, I think, is good. Combat entry. Oh, so we get we get to specifically like um, specify what they say as well, which is fun. Mm. So uh, appearing, do we? And we get to specifically. I think you can really dodge my attacks. Hoo hoo. <laughs> I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I would. Uh, but you can, uh, you I would can spend write your own. All day. I know I can write my own. I know <laughs> I can write my own. Just perfectly scripted all your characters. <laughs> There will be a point where I will genuinely do that, but I don't think I will do that on camera. I think I will do that in my Streams, own time. Stream grinds to a crashing halt for three mm, hours. Mm, mm. <laughs> and then we get to also choose what uh, what outfit she's wearing. I the the school uniform esque version of it I think is pretty appropriate for Sabine until we find a new one. So that that works. That works. I'm happy with our Sabine Kissner. Ginger's been saved. And now we can give her a list of attacks too. Um so combat pages for her. 
character customization the most insidious yeah. trap of all. For, for real, though. You want um, your key page first, just as well? Oh, right, yes. Um, I oh, guess right. we might as well give her fins. Character modification screens are a massive time void. Yeah, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna <laughs> we we do not have the time. So currently Roland is really slash heavy, so we need to go and give her different elemental attacks, as it were. Uh, we're still gonna keep a dodge and strike because that was actually pretty useful when we were running low on MP. Um, we're gonna give her the light attack. Gonna give her the quickness. I'm gonna give her Backstreet's Dash because that bleed might be useful. I think she's a low MP character. She doesn't need as many threes as the other, as, as our as our main lad. Um, I'm give her two wallops and a skitter away. Okay, looks good to me. Down with the quickness. Exit pursuit by despair. All the puns, all the puns today. Everybody's really on it. I appreciate it. Uh, so this is, uh, hold on. Hello. This is Sabine's deck. Uh, enter, cool. Fantastic. Uh, we didn't gain any books to burn that way, did we? So we're just kind of continuing with story moving on to book number three heck my internet is being buggy oh no problem thank you for hanging us with us tv head have a good one have a good one i'm gonna add the book of thin and continue with plot i'm enjoying this a lot this game is good <laughs> thin has failed as expected it wasn't gonna last too long anyway it was just mediocre. He should have gotten a decent modification surgery or had enough talent to make up for his lack of experience. But he didn't have any of that. It was nothing more than an overconfident brat. Bye-bye. <laughs> hmm. Oh, did I lose audio from you, Tom? Uh, I don't know. No, 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 you're good, you're good, you're good. Nope, it's just that. the audio that cut out. A fucking chainsaw baseball bat, good God. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, do you want to take Eri? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, too bad, I kind of liked his affable and cutesy attitude. Yeah, the music cutting out, I think, is the game. I had a moment where I was like, oh, God, did it break? No, it hasn't broken. Mm. It's just they cut out the background music. Though I agree, he was bound to die sooner or later. Congratulations, by the way. You must have more options now that you're a grade 8 fixer. Yep, so you better be careful. If you don't pay me well enough, I might move to another office. Heard that you're barely covering your own taxes these days, let alone the monthly rent for this office space. Am I wrong? I believe the case I had Finn handle could make a breakthrough. You mean the library and the invitation you talked about earlier? You said the invitation appears randomly now. How are you going to get another one? I wouldn't have called you if I didn't have a certainty. I recently received another invitation. Considering that the invitations are going directly to who Angela dis described, Angela decides are terrible people. Uh, the fact that Yin essentially sent three of his employees to the meat grinder, I guess, would have him qualify. <laughs> hmm. Hmm, is that so? The existence of our office depends on this case. The library is sure to be profitable, I have a hunch. So we're giving it everything we have. All right, let's roll in some dough. I just bought this lovely thing here from a workshop too. Everyone loves a bit of 40k. <laughs> Chain swords, yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeding more kids to librarians seems like a good way to guarantee, guarantee more invites. Vicious cycle, that. <laughs> mm. These guests seem quite determined. We should prepare accordingly. Whole office coming at us, huh? Maybe small and insignificant one. It could prove to be a little tough for the library right now. We'll have to make it all the way to your room. Oh, the guests cannot act, si act, cannot act outside of the space we prepared for them. It's how this place works. More like the meat cute grinder. <laughs> <laughs> with the puns, let's go. After all, this space is created with limitless power. Yet somehow you, yet you somehow jumped right into my room when you weren't even invited. 
Anyways, I'm capable of protecting myself, so there's nothing for you to worry about. Greetings, dear guests. You must be the owner of this place. She doesn't even look that strong. Does she just have music that the game is not summoning? Because the music cuts out when Eri speaks for some reason. That is my power. I have <laughs> my just giant chainsaw. Ooh, just cut the music in half. Finn must have been here earlier. What happened to him? Ah, that one has become a book. I see. Mm. It's you. Oh, sorry, it is. I see. So you turn into a book if you die here. Hmm. Acting all sentimental when you were the one who sent him here, knowing he'd fail. Shut up. We all get exploited and abandoned at some point in our lives. May you find your book in this place. Such a good epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some receptions are composed of multiple acts, so multiple battles in a row. Uh, you can check the number of acts in the reception here. So we have two acts. The visual indicators of the number of acts in order can be counted here. So this first round will be up to three librarians can participate, although we only have two. And then there'll be a second round after we defeat the first. So these two people will be fighting in round one. And uh, we don't get to see who's in round two? No. Oh, fair enough. Making it mysterious as to who we might fight in round two. That's fine. And we've got our two librarians, uh, so let's go. As the emotion levels of characters rise, the overall emotion level of the teams they belong to will be heightened as well. When your team's emotion level goes up, you may choose an abnormality page to use at the beginning of the next scene. Uh, awakening and breakdown. So when we're winning, we get blue cards, and when we're losing, we get red cards. Let's just buy some time. I'm too scared to fight them head on. How long do we have to fight them? <laughs> and we got our character. Do you really think you can dodge my attacks? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oof, oof, bodied. So now that we have multiple people, this uh, one speed person is actually going to attack Roland, but we can use our uh, level four person to go and intercept that attack and block it, uh, which we'll, we'll, we'll go and do, we'll go and do. Um, that is a, an attack and then a dodge two to three. Let's go for a two to three, one to four against you so now i'm intercepting that attack and they can't do anything about it uh in the same vein i can intercept this attack which is a two to three three to four i think let's go for the big guns out the gate let's just remove them from no the messing fight. about 17 hell look at this character's eyes in the top left fucking hell <laughs> that's <Awful. terrific. laughs> bad actually Rolling a two, you roll a two, it clashes. Oh. Staggered. And you're out of here. They got me? Oh, pathetic. And so they're starting to panic a little bit. And we're starting to be a bit more cheered up. Uh, rolling a two with two, two to six is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's weak to that. Um, we're both weak to that kind of attack. Uh, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go in. Two to six. This stands reasonable odds of handling that. <laughs> I, as I understand, the last person who attacks is the person who attacks first. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, we all have our MP back, so we're just gonna go in. Oh no no no. Ooh. And then with the follow-up. Easy. Mm -hmm. No problem, no problem. Can't wait for the twist in the third act. We zoom out and it's been a near spin off all along. All of these games are interconnected. <laughs> <laughs> and so we move on to our Ah, so we get to go yeah. back to the kind of loadout menu before mm. we come back in. He has quite a good uh, tier three if I remember correctly. Commandeering. Ooh, four to eight. Mm. Mm. This is where you're at. The game actually goes, no, we're going to step it up a little bit here. Uh, so the so what you're telling me is kill you. 
have killed you first before you could I think Gary's got a quite a good deck herself as well. Um, she, um, yeah, no clash. She wins clashes. Okay. Preparations feeling good. One to five. Inflict fragile damage increase. I see. I do love the art on the cards. Uh, it's They're nice and simple. And yeah. Ah, hi, Savior Gaming 19. I see Library of Runa. I click. Yes, uh, we're playing Library of Runa as part of Cyberpunk Book Club. So we're discussing its themes and ideas as well as playing the game as a whole. I, I think, how much health does... They both have 22 health. I think I'm just going to like... And is weak to slashing damage. I think we're going to use Roland to just kind of like force down Yun before we can see any of that commandeering three. We do not need to see that. They may not be as weak as they seem. Mm. Oh, he rolled good too. Piss. Okay. Uh, is using a, a low cost move though. A low cost move. Uh, feeling good is kind of annoying. Hmm. The big happy smile with a chainsaw. So every <laughs> girl loves a chainsaw. Every girl loves a chain. Killer accessory of the season. Mm. Um, we, I think, are gonna do a skitter away on the feeling good because we get uh, more opportunities to dodge that attack. And do we get a three on our first? We do not. You are weak to slash damage. So we're maybe going to go for the bite off, maybe? Yeah, seems so cool. Yeah, yeah, get some bleed. Hey, Ruben, what's good? What's good? As someone who's beaten modded Ruiner to Hell and Black, I'm here for this. Ah, oh, nice. I, I hear. Oh, 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 baby. No, absolutely not, friend. <laughs> Ah, but do we dodge it? We don't dodge it, but take the full damage. <laughs> Deflect, and we go in for an unblocked attack. Nice. Oh, not bad. And Yay. we get the ability to use a uh, single ally. Take two to five less damage. Reduce the cooldown on the attack to zero. Oh. After three successful attacks on the same target, deal three to ten bonus stagger damage. Hmm. This might not be necessary. No. This is only for this round, isn't it? So can I defer I this? I think they actually hang around. Okay. Right. Let's go for the block, because I am still aware that uh, uh, she's she's a little squishier, so we don't it want can her to. Your, your stuff can disappear quite quickly. Mm. Oh, so I can actually choose... Well, I might as well. For now, we'll experiment with all of them. Mm. Oh, the music changed. Mm. She must have trembled hard. The knife could slip from her hand at any moment. The depth of a cut depends on the moment's mind and willpower. Oh, so we get like extracts from the books as we mm. use them in. Oh, yep, yep, yep. neat. Look, look at theming. Look at theming. Um, we're just going to make sure that Yun dies because absolutely <laughs> not. Um... So we're just going to hit him with a wallop. Uh, what are you coming out with? Preparation. Pierce to then guard. And uh, you are just going to get the beat down. Sorry, I'm just vibing for a second. Hey. Hey. It's a good speed piano. Very demo. Mm. Ooh, wow. staggered. And uh, this is the end for you. Oh, didn't quite kill. Goodbye. Book of you obtained. What a bunch of unhelpful idiots. <laughs> Turning to a book as well. This isn't what I expected. Getting real high level step chart from this music. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we're just we're just forcing it down. Uh, we all have defensive maneuvers here, but that's fine. She only has like HP. Get out of here. What? Victoire. Except specifically, depending on the page used. Ah. Mm. Mm. Very clever. I'm also. I also appreciate that they've. Um, this. This game has had the budget high enough. 
to be able to have a really good translation into English because the translation on Laboratory Corporation is rough in places. Well, it's a bit dubious occasionally. You're not wrong. <laughs> you got to go. Yeah, thank you for hanging with us, Jonas. Have a great evening. Good luck hitting the books. Excellent. This guest named Yun could make especially valuable work for us. It's you, like my friend. Moths. Yeah, sorry, I was on, I was on the wrong string. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like moths diving into flames. Now, that young guy seemed like a clever sort, but even he ended up blindly jumping into the fire to get what he wanted. Mm. Oh, see you as well, Will. Have a good evening. Once you've had a taste of desire, it comes in like an unstoppable wave. It's a quote I heard a long time ago. But it is that desire true to, but is that desire true to one's heart? Well, aren't you funny? You said you despise roundabout speech, and now you're being all poetic. Oh, ten delivery. A certain librarian I know would have taken an arm and a leg off if she heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to sorting books. And we move on to essentially chapter two, I assume. Oh. Just as Angela said, we really got another floor to the library. Hey there, my name's Roller. Angela, I still can't forgive you. Angela, you... I thought we were already done with that topic. Oh, look at him in the background. I only just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> just peeping. You simply need to co cooperate without complaint. That was the deal, remember? And try to appreciate that fleshy body of yours you've finally earned back. Oh, she's angry. Look at her. Mm -hmm. Did you really think you could make me happy by just giving me a human body? Don't forget, I still don't agree with you. As you wish. Damn, that was tense. Oh, hello, hello there. I'm the patron librarian in charge of the floor of history. Melketh. You seem lively, at least. What was going on there just now? I have some in the finished business with Angela. Oh, she's more of a Genki girl, right? Mm, yeah, I think so. You, uh, probably heard bits with it, but I have no choice but to follow her orders, no matter how I feel. In the same shoes as yours, though it seems we may have ended up here for different reasons. So, what can I do for you? You can bring me books, Roland. Since I'm in charge of the floor of history, I'll be sorting the books you bring in, collecting those that are about history. Like, no shit. Us librarians will then read the collected books, gradually making our floors whole and completing the library itself as an extension. And we'll naturally get to unlock more floors and awaken their patron librarians in the process. So the other librarians are asleep for now? Yep, that they are. I get the gist of it. It's surprisingly bright for someone who was upset months ago, by the way. I was kind of worried I might have to endure some of that wrath. Malkuth is doing her best. <laughs> Good old Malkuth. Despite how clumsy she is. Um, I can't let my personal affairs get in the way of work now. I still have my problems with Angela, but it's not like getting mad about it will do me any good. I've got my own reasons to do my best with this work too. Okay then, let's give it our best shot. Yeah. Happy Malkuth fun. has joined the party. I, I assume we cannot uh, redesign Malkuth. Oh, she is like her own unit, I see. Yes, so you'll now you start unlocking floors of the library, um, which have all the own librarians to unlock and their own objectives, which are usually obtain the book of who knows, because it doesn't talk tell you what they are. Mm. So the, the most useless objectives get away from them. The number. So just play the game until you happen to find the right book, you know. Pretty much, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Okay, fair. <laughs> Uh, we gained a bunch of new books. Malkuth, or many people I've seen her call her Malkute. I mean, I guess anime girls are fine. <laughs> they're, 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 they're entirely okay. Uh, we're gonna discuss two of those, one of those, and one of those. And let's see what we get. Picture on the Young's page itself being actually quite good. Mm -hmm. Uh, I noticed they didn't give us as many, so we might have to redo the fight if we specifically mm. want Yun's page. We got Commandeering, though. Hmm. Well, that's good. Commandeering be good card. We got multiple copies of Commandeering. 
you do end up with a lot of cards in the game, but you do later on, there's a lot of flaws and a lot of librarians to unlock, mm -hmm. using like the mm -hmm. off at the start of um, when you start a mission. So filling out decks, uh, being able to just fully kit out all of your librarians is kind of part of it. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, full name Mallory Cuthbert did Cuthbert didn't roll off the tongue. Yeah, M Malkuth is specifically like a node on the Jewish iconography of the Sephiroth, as I understand. Mm. So it's all it's all theme naming. It's all theme naming. Uh, Malkuth comes with a deck of cards, although they're the kind of basic deck, I guess. Yeah, they, everyone starts with basic. It is probably my one slight complaint about the game is you end up with quite a lot of micromanaging for. Mm. Uh, although you can sort of sometimes ignore flaws and like have two or three good flaws and then only come back to having to twiddle with the decks when you particularly need to. Mm -hmm. um, say if you've got an anomaly fight or something. Mm. It seems that anomaly fights you need to build for. Uh, yeah, so some of the earlier ones are fine, but they've usually got a gimmick. Um, oh, that's a... Uh... Uh, we want one that leads on offensive. We don't have any slashes yet. Break. We'll take a struggle because it's pretty good. Time for a little test. Lower the max value of opponents next die by three. Ah! Mmm. Mmm. That's juicy. Uh, we're going to give her a commandeering. And uh, our spare gut harvester. Save that current setup and call it. Uh, uh, let's invite, I guess. I think, as was commenting, there's a lot of mods for this game which I haven't tried yet. I'm mm. going to play through it first and then then mod melting love into it because <laughs> of um, course of course that's your bottom. favorite abnormality <laughs> Degenerate. Um, <laughs> yeah actually the my first encounter with library of ruiner was somebody modding uh, a character from a tabletop rpg campaign into it as like a as like a piece of fan art and i was like this looks really vibrant i do not understand what's going on or how you managed to do this but now that i've like seen this game played that's actually really neat that somebody modded that in clearly clearly i need to mod in a little caster unit as a, as a playable character it's it's got a lovely attention to detail. I do like the fact it is actually showing the invitation with the full claws at the top as well. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. now we get the real cyberpunk. Robots. The real cyberpunk starts here. You, you, you guys should regularly refill your head with brain fluid. Ah, these are very specifically androids, huh? Uh, uh, dry brain uh, dulls your thoughts. I, I knew I've been feeling so hazy these days. Where are we going to rob this time? I think we should go for a workshop. Workshops are rich and they have useful components too. How about an office? We should earn some infamy if we take down an office or two. I, I don't think we'll get anything valuable from the offices we can take on right now. A, a restaurant then. I, I like delicious stuff. What is this conversation? You, you moron, did you already forget we got our new bodies? Ah, so they were previously human and now they oh, can yeah. no longer eat the food. <laughs> but, but because we wanted to focus on earning without having to worry about food or sickness. That's right, we're enduring like crazy. These bodies, these need brain fluid, fuel and some repairs from time to time. We can't make money without feeling hungry or thirsty. Hmm. Th th that's true. It, it costs a fortune to get ourselves whole body replacements. Yes. <laughs> I can see that being an expensive venture, but, but it's still uncomfortable. I, I don't know how... I know I don't have to eat anymore, but I keep thinking about all the tasty things I had before, and it makes me want to taste them again. But that's because we got cheap bodies from a cheap workshop. <laughs> Which is like a <laughs> well, very poor plan in the grand well, scheme. <laughs> yeah, this isn't this isn't really a future-proofed computer upgrade, is it? Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, some water went down the wrong way there. 
We just have to earn more, then we can replace with apple bodies. <laughs> <laughs> apple bodies absolutely have planned ab obsolescence. That's the worst idea. That's a much worse idea. The, the most expensive ones, we can even adjust emotions and completely shut off desires on top of having good performance. I knew it was near, just look at them. I mean, yes. <laughs> but but those bodies are almost as expensive as a nest household. We, we can worry about that later. Let's focus on money making now. It's all about money in the end. So don't bring up restaurants. You're making me want to eat stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Conster, I think, is the deep-voiced one. Look, yeah. Mo, there's a piece of paper stuck in your body. Uh, I like how this body doesn't have any sensory systems, but it's annoying to be unable to feel things like this. But let's have a look at that piece of paper first. I, I don't think it was in your body until just now. M maybe if we got too infamous and somebody start sent us a calling card or something. Or, or maybe a coupon for a yummy new food. Shut up, Conster! <laughs> Are all syndicates composed of such half-witted individuals? I was expecting someone more refined. It all depends on the syndicate. The city's crowded with them. You'd even say there's one for every fixer out there. A number of thugs gather up and do things under a name, and you get a syndicate. Uh, Sophia Gaming 19 says, Oh, Brotherhood of Iron, aka Prosthetic Everything. Also, you pay an arm and a leg for the halfway decent ones. I mean, yeah, that, that, that is a big uh, common trope in a lot of cyberpunk, in that, like, the cyberware is not only is it expensive, it's also kind of actively hostile to use. Um, the gold one and only, hi, hello. How goes the booking? We are enjoying inviting people into our library and then murdering them without remorse. Uh, we're also talking about its ideas and themes as part of a book club. Um, They're involved in all sorts of different businesses, so it's hard to give a general description beyond that. They seem sloppy. Are those machines? They're not machines or AI, despite their appearance. Pure machines carrying their own emotions and desires have long since disappeared from the city. These guys are using whole body replacements. Oh, quality ones for a shoddy workshop at that. Max Harianne says, uh, I mean, what is cyberpunk without a capitalist dystopia? Yes, although I find that my favourite forms of cyberpunk are the ones that establish that, but are also establishing the people trying to push against that capitalist dystopia. I find that aspect being quite important. But we'll see whether this game does that. I have a feeling this game is a lot more pessimistic than that idea. I, I see. Do we prepare for the reception? It's almost enjoying this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's getting a little too into it, huh? So, so we can find valuable stuff here, right? So we just have to chuck up some monsters and take some books. This body has strength, if nothing else. We, we came here for loot, but what if that piece of paper was all a lie? M maybe we were too naive. There's no need to worry, dear guests. In this place, we strictly play by the rules written on the invitation. Y yikes. <laughs> Welcome, dear guests. This is the library. And I'm Angela, the director and librarian of my role's namesake. In this library, you may obtain the books listed on the invitation, if you overcome the ordeal, that is. M must be one of those ploys by rich folks. It it's all entertainment to them. I, I heard of that. They kidnap people from the back streets, trap them in the labyrinth no one can escape, and make them wander in there, fighting for eternity. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, until they die, never to see light again. We, we've come this far. We don't have to do this. We have to do this. Don't be so gloomy. May you find your book in this place, then. There's and definitely die. some of the scenes where she's just got that grin, and then mm. others where she's a bit more sort of, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel she definitely has that grin more when she's dealing with idiots. Mm -hmm. Floors that can participate in the reception are shown here. So we can select which floor we fight with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which obviously um, the drawback of uh, fighting with uh, Malkuth is she's only one, which is probably not the best idea. Uh, mm. I would want to unlock that, at think. least the second person with her before I go and take her out for a test drive, I think. Yeah. No, oh, lots of zero use cards. Ch chop it off. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
No special effects, but reasonable. I think there's a few paralysis ones kicking about on a couple of them. That two is because it only does one to one damage. I mean, it's guaranteed damage, I suppose, but it's, it's I a guess... it's a lot of hits for a tier two card. So. Mm. Uh, I guess it's best once you've broken, like, uh, stamina broken somebody, and then you can guarantee that damage. Or potentially, because in this particular fight, you've only got two actions, so the third mm. action is going to go through undefended. Mm. So if you're outnumbered, that card can be really good, I see. Yeah. Uh, blow it up on one to six, on hit and inflict paralysis next scene. Sure, sure. Endure. Oh, if you win the defense, it inflicts paralysis. I see. Is I that one the... Of all... got a, one of them's got quite... A, there's a few nasty cards in this one. 1 to 12! <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. And you. Charge up. Restore one light. Inflict paralysis on self next scene. Hmm. If you have cards that can clear paralysis from you, I can see that. Uh, the city. Oh boy, if you want more info, check the credenza. Ah, let's go look at the credenza after this battle then, if there's additional mm, lore. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll do, we'll do. All right. Uh, they are all weak to, weak to crushing damage. Otherwise, yeah, crushing damage. This one is a more scattered thing. It's weak to pierce. And this one's super weak to pierce. Okay. It's definitely a game that I'd love to see, like a condensed like TTRPG book for. That mm. you could probably run it quite happily. I've seen read the discussion threads about running it in like Blades in the Dark or something. Oh yeah, no, I can see that. Let's go. You think that? Mm. What are you doing? Charge and inflict paralysis on self. Big blocks, but we want to contest that secondary block, otherwise we get paralyzed. And this is just an ordinary one, we're not too worried about that. That's not super high, this is the problem, we don't want this to go through. We want to, we want to bully this. Um, two to five, three to four, one to three. That's also good numbers as well, how annoying. Weak to pierce, huh? No pierce attacks in our opening hand. I mean, one tactic, of course, is just to ignore the fact that your other character's going to be slapped about and just mm. throw everything. <laughs> mm, mm, <laughs> Go mm. ham. <laughs> okay. The three to six range on this is pretty good. So I think we might try and force this down just by sheer numbers. What are you about? You have uh, dodge attacks going, which might be pretty good considering you're being attacked by a bunch of people. So uh, let's... Uh, this is two attacks, so I'm dodge that. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Advanced strategy I'm not on yet, so we'll see how we go as I understand how these things work. Ooh! Nice. Yeah. Did not win the clash, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, solid turn. Oh, the mood changed. I'm not sure what actually triggers the music change, if it's based on the emotion or something else, but mm. it does change quite a lot. I mean, it's karma because I've now got two positive emotion points, I think. I would assume. Oh, everybody's going for her. Oof. Not like and I can't, out speed, I can't really outspeed to handle that. So, uh, she does go first, though. Is there somebody I can finish off? No, not really. If I can stun somebody, that would be good. The music change happens when your emotion is lower than the enemies, I see. Ah, ah cause they have three emotion points while I only have two, I see, I see. So yeah, we're calmer than they are. Yep. Um, oh god, it is lots of attacks, huh? Mm. When yours is higher, the corresponding floor music plays instead. I see. Hmm. Yeah, this is a lot of damage coming our character's way here. 
I guess if I go for dodge, then I can keep holding that dodge as long as it's higher than other attacks, right? I think so. Q is like bitch baby in terms of chop it off because that one is going to be real easy to dodge. Well, you're going to have to take the E3. Oh, no, no, because you'll override because you've got the four. Yeah, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. fair. And then, because nobody is attacking this guy, I get to gut harvest unimpeded. Yay. <laughs> Removing organs. Uh, I don't like blow up. Which is the, it was Const, Constor is the one with the, that can do like 18 damage. So we wanna, we wanna force them down pretty fast. Uh, okay, let's see how we do. Ooh. Hey. Dodged. 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 I take that five though. Ow. Oh, Ooh. But you're staggered now. Not looking too healthy. Mm. Yay. All right, let's see. And we get to use both of these. So. Uh, the one that attacking three times goes to you. I only got to use one of them. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, you're unimpeded. So, uh, yeah, you get to die this turn. Oh, you get to go fast, though. You get to go first, though. That's annoying. Hmm, what are you coming at me with? Big shields. Regular attacks. You are really close to being stunned, though. <laughs> so handling you, actually, is, is, is a pretty uh, important priority. So we're going to go with Thrust on you to finish you off. Uh, you. We only need to spend one MP to kill. Well, we only need to spend one M MP to finish this fight. So uh, we're going to go and take you out. There we go. Two. No. And you're staggered now. Out. Beautiful. Book a Construct. Um, I don't need that. Or is it? It's mandatory. I see. Mm. Oh, sorry. I've not been looking at the chat for a little bit. Uh, when you're designing, uh, how do you re remove organs of a robotic body, though? Uh, only how do you know where they are? Well, going by what the robots in Lobotomy Corporation were like, they probably do have organs. <laughs> I like the idea of just like pulling out spark plugs and uh, <laughs> brake fluid everywhere. And now it's yeah. the final turn, as it were. We're uh, way higher in a ooh different version. Uh, we don't want that paralysis, so we want to be able to overstep that uh, pretty pretty firmly. It's five, six, two to six. And I would like you, Sabine, can secure the kill. Mm -hmm. I disagree with that quote. Not all scars are marks of failure. Yeah, I mean, this, this, <laughs> uh, the the tone of this is definitely kind of like, oh, everything is very depressing. Oh shit. <laughs> God damn it. Fine. Six. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> it's all going to be on Sabine to clear up next turn. Eject a liver. Mm hmm. Oh, and it goes first? Fine. Just just die. Have you considered <laughs> have you considered perishing? Hmm. Ooh. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> No, not a kill though, but they are they yeah, are broken. Yeah. They are staggered. Yeah, yeah. To be I'll, fair, I'll, these I'll robots have that. really shoddy robot bodies. Yeah, true that. Hey, Cold Fusion. We're just going for the wallops. They have to take their lumps, as it were. There we go. Maybe I should have spent more time enjoying my life. Hmm. The Brotherhood of Iron defeated.
And we get a decent number of books. Yeah. Ah, Sabine has gained an item. Yes, you know. Uh, HP plus one, you. stagger resist minus one. Oh, your stagger gets worse, I see. Mm. So you end up with piles of these by the end of it, or as mm. it goes on. See, it's not a good idea to keep your brains inside a hunk of scrap metal. There are organs inside there. Isn't it still better than a frail human body, though? There are plenty of ways to enhance your body without replacing it for another. Heck, there's actually many options. Tattoos, prosthetic limbs, medication and drugs, you name it. It's all possible as long as you have the cash. Replacing your body with a machine, on the other hand, is a one-way ticket you can't ever go back on. Erotic bodies cannot resemble humans too closely, even if someone's swapping out their flesh. Life goes right down the drain right away. Hmm. Well, that's just your opinion, man. Hmm. When does someone? When does one put their brain in the machine? Then you know this, Angela. This is information you know. <laughs> but okay. Well, when you urgently need a huge amount of money, you can sell off your old body and organs for a good chunk of cash. Two. When you need to do repetitive work for a long time, hey, mechanical bodies like that aren't bad for that kind of labour. Broken parts can be quickly replaced and desires can be kept under control, so it has its merits. Repetitive work for a long time. What, interested in getting a new body? No, I was just reminded of my past for a moment. Winks at camera. Hmm. So let's go look at some info, I guess. In the credenza, you can read and review various story contents. Press each tab, switch between the list of stories you'd like to see. Oh, that gives you the, like, the visual novel bits. But then you can also click on an actual person's page to listen to see. Alright, story time. Wanna hear a secret? This is kind of embarrassing, but I used to have a dream once, like Peter Snap. Yeah, I know, I'm still younger than him with a long future ahead of me, but what can they do? Life's too rough for that. Others say that rats are a pathetic bunch who are too incompetent to join even the smallest syndicate, let alone join the way. Filthy losers who feed on junk and leftovers, not making any effort to change. Back when I was a young kid, I didn't like I thought I was better than those rats, so I decided to get into an examinee town. An examinee town, okay. Little did I know that it'd be the one choice I'd regret the most. I begged and nagged at my parents wanting to achieve that stupid dream. How'd it go, you ask? Seems you're just as so stupid, aren't you? I wouldn't be hanging out with these folks if I made it now, would I? What I'm saying is, dreaming won't do jack shit for me. They didn't end up here because they gave up trying. Hell, they wouldn't even have set foot in this garden in the first place if they had what it takes to achieve their dreams. You get it now? Pete's a huge idiot. Oh, I think it's time for nap slash bedtime. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Althea. There's not a lot of peeps who hang around in the back streets alone. It's just because it's just madness. We can dowdy folks got a band together to survive. Get into a small syndicate or anything and make a living something. Some ignorant fool makes a scene in the back streets on their own. They're just making themselves a target as soon as they notice others. As soon as others notice them. That's why we move in groups. We're called rats for a reason. And crawl about the dark in packs and jump at prey for a chance to bite them apart when we spot one. So, you wondering if we rats have any dreams? Hmm. I guess belonging to a proper syndicate, if any. We're just two tacking amateurs, we call them. We hate being bound to rules, so hell of freeze over before one of us joins an office. And no rat I know would ever move to an examinee town and study for wing ex entrance exams. Unlike Lenny, um, those nerds at examinee towns ain't too different from rats like us. We're all dreaming silly dreams that'll never come true with our petty skills. An office, a wing, a syndicate or whatever. I think it's an easy task to belong to a decent group. People just accept what they've got and live long. But still, I want to have a dream. Did you know? There's grades for each alley in the back streets. Funny, ain't it? Trash and a trash can are grading for each other. The parts that are under the protection of a syndicate officer association are pretty safe. Sweepers can't raid those streets easily. Putting the people who live there in a different grade from those who don't know is pointless, honestly speaking. Sure, it's a bit safer over there, but we're talking about the back streets again. You know what's funnier? 
Even kids will group themselves according to what group of the streets they live in. They'd even shun others whose clothes or manner didn't fit their tough style. I had no choice but to accept this symmetry. You wondering how things were in the alleys I lived? I couldn't afford to pay protection fees through syndicates, so the sweepers came down at night and collected most of my niggas. I had to witness them take chunks of flesh out of my parents and brothers while they were still breathing. Don't pity me, though. My story ain't nothing special around here. Huh. The back, back, back plot to all the characters. It's if, you broke, if you broke, if you broke, your life <laughs> is forfeit. Also, thank you for the follow, Althea Looney. I didn't quite catch that for a second. Mm -hmm. What about Finn, who's a bit more... <laughs> Look at this, like, Nagi Makoto looking ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, sis. Actually, I wanted to, I talked to you some time ago. By myself, of course. Welcome to the city. Everything is terrible. <laughs> By myself, of course. It sounds a bit lonely, but I'm fine. Today's not going to be the same as the days before. I have good news. I finally joined an office run by this guy named Yin and officially became a fixer. You're proud to see your precious little brother, younger brother grow up and make it, aren't you? Isn't it cool? I told you there's no need to worry about me. Oh, and about Yun's office. I think it's a really nice place. No, I'm not lying. Our operator Yun is a bit cold, but he teaches me a lot of things. And also there's Ari, who's my senior. I've yet to be friends with her, but she seems like a good person too. For now, though, they're giving me the small jobs, like searching for lost cats. Maybe they're worried I'm too inexperienced to handle surface stuff. It's not really fancy, but if I start with small tasks like this and work up slowly, I'm going to be a great fixer one day, yeah? My heart's already pumping with excitement. When I become a proud and dashing fixer, maybe I'll buy a Nest migration ticket and get a nice new home for you. I could buy my gear at a workshop thanks to your help and all that, but that's not all. You always looked after me, sis. It's kind of embarrassing to talk about this. Anyway, don't worry about me and the things you want to do. I know you were uh, always too busy caring for me to pursue your own interests. You offered to give me a prosthetic body or uh, even a minor procedure in the tummy pet, but I'm fine without any of that stuff. And you got some money to earn for yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm tired, so I'll be going now. I ran around the whole town chasing a cat all day. Night, sis. I hope we see each other again. And they never did. <laughs> Fuck! Shit! They never did! Oh no! Hmm. <laughs> the Society of Fix. Mm, this is more. Is this in their own voice? It is in their own voice. The Society of Fixes is built entirely up on meritocracy. The greater you are, the higher you can climb. On the other hand, if you don't have the capability, should you be th you should be thankful for any org who accepts you and stay low. Thing is, capability can mean many things. For some, it could be physical strength, and others, it might have superior intellect. It seems kind of unfair to me that they make arbitrary evaluations of a concept that can be taken in so many different ways. Not that I think I have some hidden talent that deserves a better grade or anything, though. I do feel a bit upset, but I think I'm in the right place. The jobs I usually do are looking for lost cats at night. You can tell how low my spot is, yeah? I'm not a huge fan of the jobs I'm doing right now, of course. I mean, sure, I wouldn't say no to some flashy requests. I just accept it to carry on with my life. Sight reading these is tricky. Um, I usually, when I'm given stuff to read for like voice acting jobs, I tend to do a lot of line breaks, so I find it easier to sight read. So when it gives me like big paragraphs like that, I'm like, fuck, why? <laughs> it's almost like typing when someone's looking over your shoulder, isn't it? Mm. Immediately they... <laughs> I just lose my place really easily if I can't like have a visual marker of where I am in the text. Um, you have to have lots of things before you can jump into the fixer business. Starting with choosing equipment, you'll need clothes to protect your bodily accessories, etc. But before any of that, body augmentation comes first. There's no point in having masterful skills or fancy equipment if your body can't keep up, you know? And training hard isn't going to do it. There's a limit to training your body, and the fittest body is still no match for mechanical prosthetics or bionic organs. You've got to be able to keep your body intact to do anything, so you're pretty much forced to spend a fortune on it. And there's a ton of methods to enhance your body. Exoskeletons, bionic surgeries, nano tattoos, prosthetic body parts, you name it. Deciding what workshop tech to employ is up to preference and purpose. Some would want insane muscular strength that would let them carry a power pole one-handed. 
and others would want a ludicrous speed quick enough to skip over multiple blocks in a split second. It's so diverse I could go on forever. You need any ability? They've got it covered. The only hurdle is money. In the city, money is what gets you power. That's why the first thing we notice when we assess our foes is how much they've spent on their bodies. Oh, of course, some technologies patented by closed groups uh, like certain syndicates or wings are hard to get your hands on, even if you've got all the cash in the world. Just look at me though. Um, I took a teensy little procedure to lift me from this... I took, it took a teensy little procedure for me to lift this humongous weapon with one hand. This is the kind of power you can get, you see. Body augmentation is more of a necessity than an option these days. So you want to study up on that. You don't want to stay a weakling when everyone else is getting their augmentations, you know? Hmm, maybe there's a prosthetic thing going on here, maybe. I mean, that is a, a pretty big part of lots of different types of cyberpunk is the ability of, or the relationships in one body after one augments themselves. And the modern, like, queer reading of cyberpunk is obviously the ability to be able to craft the body that you're comfortable in is really powerful, right? Um, and, like, self-affirming. But, but, it seems that a lot of the characters in this are augmenting their bodies just for raw strength and not necessarily for their own peace of mind or comfort, which is a very different thing. <laughs> Definitely really looking for the modern day sci uh, sorry, cyberpunk renaissance. I'm going to cyber bob myself into something that's the antithesis of what you like in um, cyberpunk. I have like a giant cannon for an arm. I mean, <laughs> like, you would do that, and then you'd be like, oh, look, I can't paint my minis anymore, and jacking off is really difficult. And then you'll be upset, so. <laughs> <Can't be that. laughs> Best make sure you get the right arm turned into a cannon, yeah? <laughs> I'll get my left arm to the ambidextrous. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So there is a law. There is law. That is good to know. Uh, how are we doing for time? Two hours. We'll do We'll do one, maybe two battles, see how long they go. And then we'll uh, move into the kind of like review segment, I think. Uh, let's burn quite, these quite books. A good level. One of my, uh, one of the more entertaining groups coming up next, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've just been messaged, like, a ton of times on Discord oh, while well, I've been live. I have no idea why. Uh... Oh, it's things that can wait. It's fine. One was definitely me saying I was grabbing a beer while you were... Yee! Uh, we got a whole bunch of robot bodies. Nice! Electric mm, shock really on, this, as well. on a successful attack, it may be inflict paralysis. So that is very good. And then it's just choosing whether you want to be uh, strong or weak against various things. Uh, there's Mo. Mm -hmm. And on. Okay. You only no. live once. Oh, oh! I'm gonna have to put that in a thing. That's such a gambling. Such a, such a. How are you feeling? <laughs> mm -hmm. Roll. You a high roller? I'm sure. I'm sure there are effects that push up results and die rolls. Yeah, there is. There is. Back in the tech, have to work early tomorrow. It's gonna close. Oh, sure, sure thing. I mean, even if you need to, even if you need to step away for a while, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and then lots of chop it offs. Mm -hmm. A three attacks on a two is solid. Yeah. Uh, okay. We've already kind of got all the things from that, so we don't really need to hit that anymore. Uh, let's update our decks, I guess. Yeah. I'd suggest possibly starting with Malcolm because you've got an anomaly fight. Ah. Ah, interesting. Uh, oh, so there are multiple people that can be involved in anomaly fights, huh? Effectively, they're set to each floor. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got a certain number of abnormalities on each floor. That's mm. sort of, sort of um, type. This isn't super awful, depending? Yeah, uh, it's, it's sort of useful in... I suspect it's quite useful in fights where you're potentially using up quite a lot of energy if you've got mm. quite a greedy deck. Mm. Uh, I don't think I have the cards to make this go off. This seems part of a combo, and I don't think I have the other combo pieces to make that justify it. I should also change his outfit, but we can um, save this deck and then reapply it. So. Um, we've got some in Endure, so we've got a defensive. And this was good. I quite like this card, so we're definitely taking mm. that. 
and then we can take an offensive one as well. That's just pretty solid. I think Roland is the one that's going to be like piling on the number of attacks, especially for this. I do time, like that card. Time for a little test seems very scary. <laughs> stand to have another two. How are we doing for variations? Um, we need... Uh, add fragile. Add two power for fragile. That seems good. That's quite a good risky. I'll say the one to nine is quite a large range. But, mm, uh, mm. but if we win, then our next awesome. attack hits really hard. round out with our threes. We don't have any fours yet. Commandeering. Hell yeah. And then we go for gut harvesting because gut harvesting is just good. Uh, we are going to override that. Fantastic. Uh, Sabine. Uh, some of these we can change out. We don't need more. That street stance is no longer a thing. Quickness is still okay. Get Roy is pretty decent still. Yeah, light attack we can just remove. Yeah, it's actually not great. Um, yeah, that's one of the best deck ones. We're going to so. put in a you only live once, I think, for Sabine. Sabine is the big hits. We yeah. know this. We know yeah. this. Uh, and then we need to put in some twos. For the scene. Oh, yeah, inflict bleed. Yeah. And then she needs. We already have four blocking cards with her, so we can kind of go for something a bit more aggressive. Uh, let's go for a blow it up. So for paralysis. Uh huh. Speed's deck, we're writing that. Fantastic. And then we're going to look at Malkuth. Uh, we've already got the commandeering on, but we want to inflict some paralysis, I think. Gain two strength. Ah, oh, this is a defensive two. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, two strength puts your damage on the next round, so. Mm -hmm. Quite good. Remove that for a drink. That's good. Yeah, these seem fine. Uh, and then I get to set everybody's, like, um. Set everybody's kind of outfits so they're key pages. Um, we like the ability to maybe inflict paralysis. Oh, does this also dictate your health maximums? Uh, maximum? It does, and your speed. Ah. Everything else, so uh, generally are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. so you then import deck straight in, so assuming you can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you want to load and load Malkuth's. Yeah. Yes. Okay, easy. And that also saves and I don't need to do anything for that. She gets quite a, quite a flash jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, who was it who got the item as well? Uh, uh, she got the item. So I think it's in the librarian info, if I remember rightly. Yeah, there you go. And you have to find which one of the tanks it was in. Uh, there you go. You've got a little bandage across the nose. Yep. There's an on-off button as well, so if you get something that looks terrible, you can, you can remove it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For now, I think the bandage on the nose looks fine. Uh, we're, no allies have died. We're fine. We want to... chance to slash. With master value of a defensive diet, plus three. And that's pretty solid for her. She's a bit more aggressive, so when she needs to block, having that, bo that bonus might be a, a reasonable call. Mm. I'm usually one for uh, covering weaknesses rather than... Oh, it told me that I couldn't import. Oh, I think it might have still got... I think it might still have the cards attributed to the previous deck that you'd made. Ah, right. Hmm. So it'll... Um, I can't remember. You, you might have to go to the key page that's got them on and empty the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was. Uh, There's so many of these... I think there'll be a 
filter somewhere. That's usually quite good for that. Ah, this one that has one. Yeah. And set should just be a... empty bookshelf. Yeah. I should have to think what my back uh, log of things are on my characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There'd be like crap everywhere. <laughs> uh, we're going to take this one and empty that shelf too. And then we're going to go to her deck now that she's wearing the armor defense. Load list speed import. Yes. Okay, and now it works. I see. Sick. Uh, Roland, what are we going to make Roland wear? Wait until you start getting the high level cards, some of the effects are pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm looking oh, forward to yeah. seeing the uh, interesting effects on top of that. I think I also want to give him a paralysis outfit. Yeah, you might want to empty that. Uh, oh, yes. Session um, can... grid line fixer. Uh, just going to empty that. Yeah, I mean, I reckon I'm probably about. Actually, it's hard, Judge. I feel I'm probably about. 40% halfway through the game and the cards mm -hmm. are starting to get quite silly comparatively. Um, mm. You're also getting where it feels like the deck building is coming into it a bit more than mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. um, putting the strongest card in the strongest slot. Mm. So you start looking for synergies and things. Will we enter the book of Scorched Girl? Such a good deck as well. Oh. oh. Scary fight, huh? Oh, it's multiple enemies. Mm. 500! 500. Good luck. <laughs> hmm. Fancy decorations. Hmm. Well, let's go and get rid of those ads first. That's not. She just always rolls a six. Yep. Meaning this that fight. she can force you to attack her? This fight is on the clock. Right. So I need to kind of like. Oh, but she doesn't have any MP. So yeah. she can't and when she you. gets to four, bad things will happen. Mm. <laughs> but if you you can click on things and it'll lose fifty percent of max HP and become staggered whenever an ally dies. Sure. So we're focusing down one of these. Uh, lose all light upon being staggered. So we're specifically trying to keep her from getting too scary. The, the last match flames, however, do not have any passive abilities. It seems. Mm. Okay. I went into this one unprepared and just got blown up. It was quite funny. <laughs> mm. What are you coming at me with? Dodge and then attack. On use, lose 5 HP, so they burn themselves out. I mean, it's matchstick, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you're just dodging. You don't even do anything. So we're going to be hitting that burn first. Uh, on hit and flip 3, burn. Mm. Commandeering. All the abnormal fights are puzzles and they're pretty great. 48, yeah. which is way better than the 1 to 4. In fact, we guarantee to actually deal with that immediately. But it means we don't have any MP next turn, mm. which is the risk. Yeah. But it seems that these guys don't hit like pretty like hard. Last match, but... I'm going to try and focus one down real fast, and then we'll see where we go from there. I do love the, like, individual stories that it's... Oh! So, ooh, ooh. Bye. So. That was worth it. Honestly, yeah. that was worth it. damage. And now she's staggered. I can go straight for the throat. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, two. So this goes first and it will force me to attack this, uh, which is a shame. But that's fine because if we kill it then um, it will take another 125 damage. So that's fine. I think uh, it's 50% the max, so I think it kills it if you take it down, if I remember rightly. <laughs> oh, that wasn't so bad. I'm glad we worked that out. I'm glad we, I'm glad we mapped that out. And we Reading the card explains the card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reading the card explains the card. Ooh. It's counting up. It is. But we're going first. The warmth, the feast. It's not attacking this turn either, so I can go straight for the neck. Uh, what's this doing? Dodge. Lose 5 HP on use. 
Enemies generally can't redirect to you, but they will hit unguarded if you don't counter. Sure, 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 sure. Um, I might gut harvesting and land the kill, especially if it's paralyzed. Yeah, that's odds are on your side for this one. I think you've managed to do well with the deck setup for this. All right. Or I'm an absolute scrub when I fall this at first. I mean, so. you know, if you, you if you want to know, you want to know. But I, I think we have. I think the paralysis effect on Malkuth was uh, very useful for follow-up yeah. effects. Yeah. I think that's done the job. Ooh hoo hoo! Eat it. Doesn't die this turn. But it's broken, so I I can do what I want here. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Yep, still not attacking, but uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any of whatever does the most damage here, right? Two to four is not guaranteed to kill. One to eight might do so, and they're bleeding. So let's do uh, let's do that. I'll see you one. Oh. <laughs> not today. <laughs> not today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Suppression of Scorch Girl complete. Yeah, I think her um, three, uh, four thing does like 100 damage or so. You just set you up. Uh, you just burn to death. Sure, sure, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. You've got to take her down before uh, that. So, have the books helped? Yep. Yeah, I'm sorting more somehow. Wow, that went really cleanly. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not awful at card games. Card games and know, board games are my strength. <laughs> in it, terms it does of ruin the game. it does ruin the Nathan's bad at video games um, meme. I, as well. I'm bad at action games. Action games I find really hard. But if I have the time to read things through and think things through, then mm. uh, 20 damage in a burn. That isn't an instant kill, but I can see that being really miserable to take more than one off. Um, <laughs> Ooh, that's good to hear. By the way, I think I remembered Angela saying something along the lines of earning a fleshy body the last time we met. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, were you, like, not human before? Yes and no. <laughs> it was uh, like a replacement body, a change that could never be reverted. So you had a brain transplant surgery, but somehow managed to go back to your old human body here? That's actually pretty impressive, thanks to the library's powers, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so. You can't let yourself be held back by common sense in the library, huh? I take it that you don't really like having your body back. Yeah, you didn't seem too happy back then. Oh, no, I, I do actually like it. It's just that this isn't exactly how I wanted things to go down. What did you in the past then? Yeah, I wonder. What was in the past? What was I in the past, really? You wouldn't believe it, but this is actually my third try at life. This she's upgraded from a notebook to uh, a big file effects, though, I see. Mm. This library and its librarians have a lot of history behind them. Third try? You come back from the grave or something? It's the accumulated memories from my uh, two previous bodies that were carried over, to be precise. If you think three is impressive, try Tippereth. Um, <laughs> my past selves, I, I never really thought about it this way before. This is just spoiler chat for a video game we've not actually played. <laughs> oh yeah, I said it's like you can't play this without having all of Lobotomy Corpse ball for you. Um, it's definitely just a direct up and up sequel. It uh, is what it is. It is what it is. Absolutely. A difficult problem you're facing there. How about your present self? I am an irresponsible person who let everyone do, who let down everyone's efforts. Oh, look at that expression. Yeah. <laughs> and an idiot who tried to reach for something out of my means and ended up causing trouble, I suppose. Oh yeah, this game spoils Lobcorp big time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa, 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 hold your horses. Let's not get too dark here as we're inviting children into this library to harvest them for their uh, pages. Mm -hmm. Let's just calm down for a moment. <laughs> Take a deep breath. And let it out. <sighs> In. Yeah, okay, okay. And cool. out. Cool. <laughs> Relax now. Yeah, it really helped. Thanks, Roland. I should know better than anyone. It's pointless to get upset over things I can't do anything about. I've got to start with the things I can take care of first. Right. I'll try hard with my work, too. Let's take our time with the problems of past selves. Back to the story. We've gained an assistant! 
and we've also gained the Match Girls special abilities. Oh, and this is specifically for Malkuth to use, I guess. Yes, yeah. Uh, when hit, inflict one to three burn to the attacker, gain a... Ah, so it's a counter hit. Gain a buff to be hit to inflict burn on new attacks. Sure. Uh, when Librarian's HP is 20% or lower, so if you're about to eat shit, deal 30 damage. <laughs> I've had at least one game where, like, two of my librarians have just exploded all over the opposition. It's like, oh, oh, well, oh you can it. absolutely do a critical HP burn build and deal 36 damage. <laughs> and then die. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess if you have, you can have a team of up to five, right? So you can have a sacrificial person and not fuck your APM that bad. Um, Especially if you have abilities to let you go more than once. Anyway, uh, the first two combat pages the librarian uses after this have long pages page so you get in the match light status. Um, so the next two cards that you play, you gain one ember that becomes stronger based on the amount of ember, where they have a chance of dealing damage to the user if your ember is too high. So these are all risk reward things, because you have to be punched in the face, be at really low health or increase your damage output, but you might start taking damage. It doesn't tell you how much damage you take, which is suspicious. <laughs> it's a game of discovery, not quite as much as Lobotomy Call. Yeah, that is some fishy, suspicious bullshit right there. Oh, we got another lady. Um, it seems, at the very least. Uh, let's customize this librarian. Or actually, Cold, Cold Fusion, since you seem to be familiar with this game, are these characters, like, gender-locked? Or is it, like, just a body that anybody can be? Because in the meantime, I, I don't want to run this without a Sunichi. Sunichi needs to exist in this. Yeah. I'm sure there was something I saw in one of the setups about the body type. Hmm. Uh, option A or option B, but it's locked off. Uh, sure. Mm. Uh, let's change the brightness so I can set there. Because uh, Sunichi had... They're all gender neutral, you can set them however. Fantastic. Good to know. Ah, right. Uh, a bit more saturated than that. And a bit brighter. And a bit more red. Yeah, it was a bit ginger. Yeah, there we go. Sunichi had pretty messy hair, as I recall. Yeah. Tussled, I think, a bit here. <laughs> Not sure how to prove about setting things on fire constantly. Probably mm -hmm. you know, power and above girls, really. Ah, uh, grubs up, continue everyone. Ha thanks for hanging with us, Quicks. Have a good one. Yeah, cheers. Catch you, bro. Oh, that's pretty close. Hmm. Um, you were not especially long in the back, though. Don't think so, no. Is that number two, maybe? Sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that works. Uh, face and expressions. Uh, you were less grey yeah. than that. Is there, is there a, a sort of cheeky, scandalous face as a... Mm -hmm. Option B is for a specific type of key page you can unlock later. Fair enough. Uh, looking for a cheeky grin, huh? We've got this one. Yeah. Uh, let's, see on, if we can, let's see if we can oh, get no. one with like a, a cheeky grin with teeth. It's like your normal. We've got shark teeth. It can be Gura. Oh, hot damn. Sold. <laughs> Uh, the this the smug smile from this oh that's cat that's cat mouth I see <laughs> yeah this one do I think yeah cool uh, how do we feel about the skin tone set is that fine yeah it should be quite fine mm -hmm. and appearance what do we want to look like well oh, definitely uh, one of the uh, the roughy rapscallions I think. Munchie? Yeah, 
that looks quite good. Oh, actually, that, that looks most like, that looks closest yeah. to your delivery yeah, jacket. Let's go. Yep, yep, that'll do. <laughs> nice, 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 cool. Uh, and your title. We don't need to worry about that. Complete. Changes have been saved. Uh, I'm going to set your key pages. Uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing lightning damage. Yeah, no, lightning damage is just better. Yeah, uh, uh, it's good. It's good. And what do we what do we want you to be doing? Good question. Oh, no, we didn't get any books to burn from, from fighting the abnormality. No, no. Going for the ones that I know work reasonably well. No more opportunities to use and blow it up. We have another time for a little test. <laughs> uh, Rat's Guide to Survival is a solid offense defense. Go for a solid wallop. What are we doing for spread? We have no piercing attacks. Let's remove Rat's Guide to Survival and chop it off instead to leave with a piercing. Ooh, do you get the you only live once? Ooh, everyone likes only live once. And the gut harvesting. There we go, sounds great. Uh, we're going to save this current setup as. I have to remember the styling of it. It's not a second capital I. Spell your name correctly. I've been yeah. familiar with it for a year. Uh, cool. That's saved. We Gucci. Let's invite somebody to the to the circus. Because we've completed all the missions of that. Sure, sure. Just the one I think it is. Big boys. My whole body's aching from our last job. You wanna take him? Yeah, that's lasting longer than I thought. Still, yesterday was wild, wasn't it? Yep. The new weapon you got from the workshop was a real killer. That's for sure. You don't say. You get way too excited with it, and things spiraled out of control. We had to kill more than 20 people. More than planned, thanks to you. Since it was a mistake on our part, we couldn't get paid for the extra kills. Come on, mm, let's see. Oh, don't be such a killjoy. We're the ones who went with the biggest rampage in the end. I like his jacket. I'm going to steal it's it after slight. I kill him. Direct enemy to a book. His muscles are all sore because he had to try hard to time you down. Oh, well, I said I'm sorry about it. No need to sweat it. Oh, you guys are two things too. I admit it, but Tane has a point. We all should try to cool down our temple a little. As long as we're working, it's fixes. It's not good to raise more trouble than necessary. Ooh. Former mem- Oh, no, that's you. Okay. Former members of a killer syndicate, now registered to an office and doing fixer work. Life really is full of surprises, isn't it? This office is a weird one. Can't believe people like us are accepted. Remember what the boss said. There are so many offices and fixes these days, so standing out from the others is the best way to survive in this industry. Our outfits are also quite radical compared to what other offices have. Why, well, it's filled with maniacs like us! All we've got to do is kill the targets in the most gruesome way possible and hang their bodies out in the open. No wonder everyone's excited to join. It's no different from what we've always been doing. At first, I thought it was crazy that an office would do this kind of work. But I guess threatening targets and sending them warning makes even enough sense. It seems to be working well, too. Though we've only been getting requests from no-name syndicates and poor folk, this office has a long way to go. 
It does smell full like a pack of rats in the proper office. Got a message from the boss. It says we should drop by to get new work. Even rascals like those can join offices these days, sir. <laughs> The whole Scamps. market's a red ocean. Everyone wants to be a fixer. And that doesn't count raking yourself over the coals because... Listen, I may not look like it, but I used to be hot stuff, you know? <laughs> but then things happened, and I fell to rock bottom. People stopped liking my uh, LinkedIn posts. <laughs> the joke continues. So, what did you do for a living? There's all kinds of stuff, really. Doing things within my ability. Hmm. Is that so? That means you didn't get to do any proper work, then. <laughs> oh, off. Oh. Mic drop and gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. The scene just ends there. No opportunity for a retort. Cold. Ice cold. Oh. Now he's yours, I think. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I was just kind of like, wait, did I drop? But no, we're good. We're good. Par yep. Paranoia. Well, we really did teleport in the brink of an eye. It's one of those singularities. A lot of talk of singularities, huh? Lots mm. of surprises these days. Greetings, dear guests. Hi, uh, hi, hi there. <laughs> oh, the? we opened on oh, trying to deal oh, yeah. her damage, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, she's pretty damn sturdy. How much do you spend on that bod? There's no need to endlessly exhaust yourself, dear guest. You'll need to rampage with all you have soon enough. I don't like your soft tone. You're not human, are you? Mm. Ooh, look at her face now. Yes, she really isn't. Yes, another surprise. It's so rare to meet a sapient being that isn't human in this city. I know, right? We might get a tongue of cash out of this. Ugh. May you find your book in this place. She's not having a fun time today. She's not happy. Uh, two acts, so two rounds. Mm. Yep. Yeah, look at the little hoodie guy. Look at the little hoodie guy, gonna kill him. Uh, 18 health, average. Track. Oh, this gets them health back, but it doesn't deal much damage. Stand punches. Mutilate. Ah, so they're all about HP sustain. But they have to land the hit together. Uh, to be fair, she doesn't want to deal with anyone's shit, I see. Rampage. On hit and flick bleed. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, oh, gut harvesting also inflicts bleed, but uh, so it's like an alternate option, I guess. Two to four, three to five. Three to six, three to five. Gut harvesting is a little bad. Well, I mean, this is the additional attack, I guess. It is the offensive mm. version of gut harvesting. Sure. Do you have the same? You have the same. This one's weak to lots of different things. Weak to both piercing and crushing. All right. Cool. We'll, we'll roll with Sunichi. We'll have Sunichi prove himself. Rock. New floor as well, so different mm. background. Now, how will I smack that guy? It's gonna hurt if, he stab, if this stabs you. I'm gonna try. And we return to jazzy, jazzy vibes. Mm. Pretty mediocre opening turn. Hook on defeating an enemy gains strength. I see. Uh, so uh, they 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 have um. Was it Moxie from Pokemon? If you KO a Pokemon, you get stronger. Yeah. Just tracks, no big deal. We can we can maybe go all out here if it's just a single attack. What have we got here? Maybe it's time for a little test, don't you think? Oh, we stand very good odds of clearing that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, shall we finish this one off fast then? Oh, going for me, huh? Uh, let's. Oh, look at this swing vi swing vibe. Uh, let's confirm a kill, because I'm not too worried about 1 to 4 damage. 
two. No. Mm. Flat. Staggered. And it's time to confirm the kill. Eight. Nah. <laughs> Ooh, optimism. <laughs> reasonable odds yeah, yeah. <laughs> what i i've in tabletop rolling one in eight is very good mm. <laughs> one in eight is very very good odds what are you leading with I play, gacha, I play gacha games two percent brilliant <laughs> uh i'm faster than you so let's uh lead on the skitter away and see if i can't take that off you um Whereas you only have 7 HP remaining, so I need to be dealing 4 damage. Which across 2 attacks is pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. Just die. Oh! Bloody murder. Nope! Ooh. Close to get. An interesting question. On multiple fights, do you retain your HP between? Yes, the um, so anything you've lost carries over, but you mm. do have a second um, core of sorry, second um, wing of the library to call upon. Yeah, this is why you have the backup to roll in. Oh boy, you're gonna love Boundary of Death when it shows up. Uh, why do you say that, Cold Fusion? I would love the context. Uh, what are you leading on? Oh, we're going for the rampage, huh? Uh, this suggests that it's probably easier to just contest. Because if I stun you, then you're done. Mm. What you got going? Oh, let's chop it off. Three. Oh, poor baby. And this is the end for you. Boundary of memes. Oh, right. So this isn't a, a thing that you've said is relevant to the boundary of death. It's just a thing that I get to look forward to, I understand. That's an important difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If it's a thing that I get to be excited about to run into later, don't tell me. But if it's something relevant to some of the stuff I said before, I would be interested to know how some of my kind of like approaches to strategy measure up. So this is the boss fight, huh? Uh, Tayan is our, our scary boy. Running with the rampage and like, none of this is new. Go in first. Uh, high dodge and then inflicting bleeds. It's a big RNG card. I see. I see. Well, at that point, we might have the tools to start fudging dice rolls, right? Because I can, I can already tell at this stage in the game, fudging dice rolls is going to be super important. Because that one, that... a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff you get out of picking your abnormalities and things when that comes in. Obviously, mm. yeah. That one to twelve, really interesting. Love to force that to a five to twelve. <laughs> <laughs> um, bleed X, overpower. Oh, that is scary. We don't want to see that. Mm. That's just genuinely a scary card. We'd love to take that off you. Um, Time to lay the boss into flat pack shelf. <laughs> <laughs> and now key, whose unique move is fend this off if you can. Um, on clash win, lower them are. Ah, so if it wins, it gets it gets bigger. I see. I see. How do another I want to really this? awesome, another really awesome card art as well. Mm. Do I want to approach this then? Because we've taken a little bit of damage on Malkuth. But we're not like we're not like feeling it yet. And I would kind of like to see how the flame abnormality works. If we fuck this up, what happens? Do we just kind of you, attempt this fight you, again with the other team? Uh you've still got another floor available, if I remember rightly. I have three floors available, so I can run in with my other team should this team perish in the line of battle. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, okay. All right, Apologies in that case, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll roll with Malkuth again. I want to I wanna see the um, the flame abnormality in practice. Mm. And we're probably going to get the more exciting version of the music now that this is the last fight. Um, 
three enemies, but they only have two MP each. Uh, all going pretty slow. Track is not a big deal. Quickness to then dodge, gain haste to the scene. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Which one of these? They're all kind of a threat. So really it's whoever I need to focus one down first because if all of them get their big moves off together, then we're in trouble. So it's just making sure that one of them is not suffered to live. Uh, who has the highest stun? 10 stun, 10 stun, 9 stun. The music is a delight. I think I think killing off Tain is going to be our big deal. Weak to crushing. Do we have crushing available? That might also dictate who we attack first. Struggle. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, only these weak to slashing because slashing is actually good. One we need on. McCullen is weak to slashing. That might be an easier focus down. Thinking about it. Okay. 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 Understood. Going for a crushing one to four and then a dodging six. I'm gonna get all my MP back. Let's uh, do a test. Wait, so to confirm, attacking set. No, no, no. No, this is fine because Sinichi has higher speed, so Sinichi's gonna attack first, followed by Morkuth. Yeah. So I can still open him up with. Uh, with our time for a little test. Yeah, well, he's not going to be able to avoid the two attack from uh, mm -hmm. Sidey Boy. Uh, ah, because that's coming up on the second thing. But that's just the one attack, so that's fine. Yeah, exactly. It's um, only one to four. It's not the end of the world. And then we're going to use Dried Up to gain strength for Malkuth next turn. <laughs> Miserable. Nice to go. Max damage on the four. Haha! <laughs> I must have. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. What are you going to say? I, I must admit, I do love how the uh, starting the round. Um, a finger snap uh, mm -hmm. noise. It's just so stylish. It's very satisfying. Considering all the attacks, there is essentially a reeling and reel up animation and then the follow through. It's the reeling pose and then the follow through pose. There's no swing. So the fact that they managed to make all the attacks really punchy despite that is quite nice. Um, I think we're going to go for ashes. We're outnumbered here. Um, so being able to deal damage back is important. Oh, and we're just forced to use this. So. Oh. Let's bring up, let's come up. Uh, we have the additional attack with Malkuth, so we might be able to confirm the kill pretty easily. But uh, what have we got? Was You've got six health, eight health for me. So I've got to deal four damage to you. Guaranteed with well, so let's go do that. Meanwhile... Yeah. You are going to get interrupted by the fall. Ah, that's so. true, that's true. I can't do anything about that, so I might have to re... Let's reassess them. Let's make this an endure. It's only a one to four, I've entered local. Uh, we tie. What what happens on speed tie? Uh, I think... You just... I think it'll... Uh resolve at the same time. I don't think you'll be able to sneak through. Mm. I'm pretty certain anyway. Blocked. Count it. Ah, no, we got through first. Uh, You're done. It don't. I blocked some of that. Ow, that hurt though. They got me good. This can't be happening. Malkuth, the resident of... Oh, because it did fire damage back upon being hit too. So, mm, so. Yeah. Not yeah, they are now burned at the end of the scene. Take two damage. Oh, so we're being ganged up on, but we're going faster here, so I can take their attention for one of them. Mutilate we don't want, but Sunichi can take it because they have higher health. Mm. Um, I am going to get in interrupt that preemptive strike, though. We don't want that. Uh, we are gonna... Hit him with the prep. To 
So for the next turn, what are you coming at me with? Two one to sixes. Do I just force that three with gut harvesting? He's oh, low staggered. Yeah, I mean he oh he's he's paralyzed too, so his rolls are gonna be garbage. Goodbye, friend. Oh, clashed. Too bad. Oh, nice. Took some burn. Oh, they're both burned now. And he's stunned. Yeah, uh, yeah easy peasy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going first, but that's fine. We can use Sumichi Sumi to confirm the kill. And you are coming at me with an attack and a dodge. Uh, I'm gonna... Can't hit all of that. No. Absolutely not. Mm. It's a shame when you overkill, your remaining attacks don't move over yeah. to remaining enemies. I think they realise that that would be too good. Mm -hmm. I mean, mechanically, I do love it. It's pretty sound game. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, this plays really nicely. Mm. Once you understand all the math and what it's trying to tell you with the dice rolls, it's really good. Yeah. Sunichi well, just are... cutting them down. <laughs> But there's definitely that level of sitting there going, oh, come on, I need them to roll higher. And it, oh, God damn it, dice. No. I mean, that's where the thrill of these games comes in. <laughs> when it's the thrill of the dice is what, this is what we live for in this channel. It's what mm. we live for. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll um, see what story happens on the other side of this. Oh, they've got a bunch of nice things. Oh, yeah. uh, boost pierce attack damage and boost stagger damage. <laughs> You've got a wimple. <laughs> <laughs> Little, little, uh, I, I think that's supposed to be like a hoodie's hood, but it definitely <laughs> looks like a, a granny's like head scarf. <laughs> Great work as always. I could learn more about the offices thanks to these guests. I uh, don't get too bothered with what they said about you, all right? Uh, are you trying to consult me? Maybe, maybe not. I don't really care if you're actually human or not, you see. That's refreshing to hear. It's been quite a while since I've heard such words of comfort from even one person, too. But that doesn't feel no. sincere. <laughs> no, it does not. Well, we're in the age of humanity, after all. Age of humanity? What does that mean, exactly? Don't stare at me too hard now. I don't know all the details, either. At some point, intelligent or sapient beings that weren't human were actively driven out of the city into the outskirts. You mean like abnormalities? Mm. I'm not too sure why it took place, but the Artificial Intelligence Ethics Amendment was introduced as part of that movement. It was already possible to create machines capable of feeling emotions and desires, actually. Those are pretty much human, in other words. I guess that was the problem. Thanks to the AI Ethics Amendment, no machines could ever be made to resemble humans, including replacement bodies. Hence why when people do full body replacements, they look like clockwork guards rather than people. Hmm, yep. Though there seems to have been a few exceptions. Hmm. It's as I said, I'm no human, I'm a machine, an artificial being. To be precise, I was designed using a human as a template. Only a fraction of their brain was used in my creation. Ah, so the, the bitch section of her brain then. No, wait. So it's not even the human <laughs> brain resting in a robotic body? Ah, yes. The AI. AI indeed. <laughs> uh, Project Moon makes fantastic games that make absolutely no sense until you play them for a few hours. I think from, from what I watched of Lobotomy Corporation, the learning curve of that and what it's trying to tell you is by design so much steeper than this. This has some UI issues. But I think the game of this is actually easier to understand faster, especially since it gives you perfect information of what is in the opponent's decks aside from abnormalities. But abnormalities have their own rules. So, you know, I, I think this game makes a much more concentrated effort to be as long as you read what the game is telling you, you can do okay. And I know that's very rare in Let's Plays. Um, there's the pressure as a Let's Player to uh, be really entertaining and read really fast and tell funny jokes and then you don't read what the game's telling you and you go oh I don't understand this game sucks and I try not to be that person I really try to not be that person anyway not at all I'm purely a machine 
What about that fraction of the human brain you mentioned? It was only an electronic copy of the map of her brain. My body is entirely composed of mechanical components. I had a feeling. And it looks like you've been living under a rock your whole life, seeing how you're oblivious to the workings of the world. You've got to be extra careful then, especially if you're planning to leave here someday. You're a sapient android with emotions and desires. Your existence is most likely a complete violation of the AI Ethics Amendment. <laughs> is Roland saying this out of a place of compassion or to try and rattle Angela, I wonder? <laughs> the head's scarily good at spotting anomalies like you. Oh right, in case you don't know, the head is basically a bunch of shit creeps that rule over the entire city. Capital C. Mm -hmm. Though, probably won't ever get to face them. Hmm... Anyways, this whole library is at huge risk in the place. In the first place, the librarians over here seem like they're humans, but not really human at the same time. It's just as you say. I was designed to feel emotions, and I spent what felt—I uh, spent what felt like an eternity on the stage, repeating, perform, repeatedly performing a play that never seemed to end. And when I thought it was finally over, it turns out it never really ended. Books Harry Ann says, "Why would I ever leave my beautiful murder library?" Indeed. I gotta say, whoever created you must have been really something else, too. I don't know what motivated them, but breaking the rules to snake by the head itself takes more than just goats. No one can escape the head's enforcement. They did all eventually die. I bet the library will be safe. It has to be safe. It's like a birdcage. No one is free to enter, as no one is free to leave. Again, with that dreamy speech you despise so much. What do you even mean by that? I will leave this place one day, take revenge on all things that made me into what I am, and earn true freedom. I don't care too much either way. <laughs> what a response. Good old Roland. <gasps> That's that, and this is this. <laughs> She's basically like, one day I'll I'm escape from the library it. and kill everyone, and Roland's like, eh. Yeah, we'll get this. Let's see, this guy's from your sod's floor to patron librarian of technological sciences. <laughs> so, the let's play that I watched um, was from a dude called Sin Victor. Seems pretty well established, although I'd never watched any of their content before. And he gives a very specific voice to your sod. Um, I don't think he liked any of the uh, male, like, Sephiroth characters much, because he tended to give them very kind of, like, dismissive voices. I'm your son. Look at me, I'm really snooty and have purple hair. Ah, oh, was the kind of like voice that he gave the character, which isn't entirely out of place, but Hey there. Name's Roland, Angela's servant. I'm your sod, the patron librarian of the floor of technological sciences. Is it just me, or is this a cold and piercing stare I'm sensing? Feels kind of different from Angela's, I gotta say. Oh, I just noticed this theme is like a variation on the relaxed, mm. trumpet-heavy theme that you get with Angela. Yep. Ah. Mm. What name? Don't tell me. Are you one of those types that result to violence when someone talks crap? Hmm. Your necktie was loose. Oh, uh, thanks. Guess you're a nice fellow after all. Ooh, that's pretty. Mm. Tell me, why do you comply with Angela's orders so meekly? Well, mostly because I have no choice but to help her. Also, I like my legs. <laughs> <laughs> I no, love I not being torn limb from limb. <laughs> as far as life goals go. <laughs> now that I think about it, Mark didn't seem too fond of Angela. Is it a trend to dislike her or something? It's so says, personable. <laughs> says, finally, the yaoi portion of the game. Your tie was loose. Let me I like the smell of your cologne, Roland. <laughs> it's obvious that we wouldn't approve of her. Angela... She utterly crushed our hopes at the very last moment. Sounds complicated. Why are you working for her as a librarian, then? It was part of the deal. Deal, huh? 
And I guess that deal is why most of the floors of the library are locked off and librarians are asleep. Hmm. Boy, I am not a fan of convoluted stories, especially if it involves sentimental stuff. Anyway, both you and I, you and I are obliged to help Angela now, aren't we? That is true. Let's give it our best shot then. Put her there. What's the meaning of this? I like his little gemstone and his tie. That's cute. Mm. The, all, the, the the formal wear of all of these characters is really nice. I I, I really like the the characters' outfits of it. I um. Mm -hmm. It's just so much like good design just in all the art direction of this game. Like even the abnormalities, which look a bit weird, mm. are still in the same sort of yeah style and gel very well with the game. It's, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, Lobotomy Corp was, had very much like a paper cutout kind of vibe. And this is still yeah. kind of like chibi in like the battle sprites and stuff, but the art style is still notably different. Um, mm. A friend of mine who um, is uh, an obsessive kind of like sewer uh, gay way, got way too much fabric in his house and then was like, I need to move house and I can't move all of this fabric. <laughs> Please, friends, take some. So I've been, I've gotten a lot of really, really interesting fabric, and I'm looking forward to an opportunity to uh, start sewing something new. Because um, I've not, I've not done any, uh, I've not done any tailoring in a very, very long time, and mm. it would be nice to uh, get back into that again. Yeah, and cool. uh, these are giving me, these are giving me inspirations. Not necessarily cosplay, but looking at the cut of some of these items, are like, hmm, I wonder how easy that would be to make. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Handshake. Duh. Never tried it before. You know the. Look forward to working with you, kind. Yoshiko. Yoshiko, Monogashmas. Come on, line up a little. If we can't avoid it, we might as well enjoy it. It's supposed to get you books, you uh, like I do with Malkuth, right? Indeed. My role is to collect and sort books about the technological sciences of this city, specifically. Since it's become clear that we are both well aware of our occupations, kindly take leave now. Fine, fine. That was about to anywhere. Rude. No, I don't want to bring books to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bucker. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, we've we've leveled up. We're now an urban yeah. myth. We are now an urban myth. Yep. Ah, and so the chapter progresses. They do yes. not have the time to think about the terror at the end of the song before the setting of the sun. All right, cool. I, I was expecting I was gonna be like, I'm gonna read some of those backstories before we wrap, but it turns out we get more plot. Um, any more reports on the distortion from the Hanno Association or Zwei Section One? I guess this is you. Yeah. None, sir. They're all observing the situation for now. Sorry, this must suck to read for you. <laughs> oh God, my eyes. Uh, they did they, not. They think this they is did. you. They did. I don't know, am I, am I the three question marks or are you the three question marks? I guess this is you. <laughs> they did nominate a number of likely suspects, however. So far we have two urban plagues, Laundry of Dreams and Yesterday's Promise, and one urban legend, the Church of Gears. The, what, the investigation has been going too well, is it? I have no idea which one. <laughs> oh, and the library, a recently appointed urban myth, is also on the list of possible sources. Hmm. Huh. So even the higher ups are clueless, aren't they? Seeing as they're throwing out some random guesses now. I'm starting to get used to sorting out books now. Tell me, why are you helping me so submissively? Well, remember when you said you'll kill me if I don't cooperate? Because I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't leave here by myself either. Though you don't appear to be motivated by fear. I've seen a lot of people crawl along the floor, stricken with fear and terror. Uh, McTarian says, Laundry of Dreams sounds like a monthly subscription service. Like Loot Crate, fucking HelloFresh. Deliver yeah. Laundry of Your Dreams direct to your door once a month. Oh, God. Judging from my past observations, I doubt you're helping me simply because you're afraid of dying. What the hell were you doing in the past? To be honest, I have a few things I want to know about this place, too. Such as? You said you wanted to get the one perfect book as you gather books about the city, right? I figured I could run into some fun experiences if I join you on that journey. I don't have a whole lot to do out there anyway. I'll go back to being a washed up fixer, scraping the bottom of the barrel again. And there is one thing I've been meaning to figure out uh, more than anything else. 
I we can maybe find Nancy here one day if I stick around and help you out. We have a confidence, coincidence of interests, I see. Uh, sure, as much as I exploit you, you're free to make use of me. Try to be careful about it, though. The careless attempt could seriously get you killed. Eesh, you've been way too vicious with words. I was running Reverse Monsters, Inc. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you so sharp? You better not pray into my past any further. I already feel like slowly melting your limbs this time. I jeez. Um, I have a question, ma'am. Do you take questions, ma'am? What is it now? Make sure it's an appropriate question. I did warn you already. What's up with the librarians here? They don't really feel like real humans. We know this. It was established. But they don't seem to be machines or artificial creatures either. Entities called, abnormal uh, entities called abnormalities and employees, both of which were thoroughly exploited by the facility that once stood upon where we are. Hmm. hmm. They're just like me in that sense. Originated from humans, taken advantage of, and abandoned once grown out of use. I don't know what you're doing with them now, as it still looks like exploitation. They were broken. They couldn't even sustain a stable form, and their existence was so fragile they could fray away at any moment. They barely kept together as and bound them to a physical body and a book. All I can do for them now is to find them the one book that will free me and the librarians. You want to release the librarians? At the cost of how many lives, Angela? <laughs> <It's> all thousands. <laughs> That's the only way for any of us to leave, you know. I use the same kind of power to reconstruct your body. Uh. Just remember this. As we collect numerous books from our guests, we will eventually reach the one absolute book that contains everything. Let me have your sword. Uh, what we're going to go and do is that we're going to burn some of the spare books that we got. Uh, and then we're going to use that to then look at their profiles. Cool. And then we'll uh, uh, wrap up the show by kind of talking about our the themes and ideas and ideas we can take away. Because goodness, this is lots of interesting ideas. Oh, we've got some going firsts. That's good. That's good. We like that. Rampage. And we've got to fend this off if you can. We've got the good cards. Yeah, you can start, start founding the early foundations of a bleed build with a lot of these from what I recall. Mm. Okay, okay. So we hit the credenza. Uh, patron librarian stories. Uh, so I think those are just playbacks. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, skip. Yeah, so the scene replays. Um, uh, we want books. Of Clannard, Brotherhood of Iron, Moe's Page. <clears throat> Let's go. Take a sip of Agua as I do this read. Do you want me to do this one as I was <laughs> no. no, 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 I'm good. This is this this is always practice for me. Being able to read these good. paragraphs is a, <laughs> is the thing. If you if there's one that you particularly want to take, you can. No, though. no, help yourself, help yourself. <laughs> I don't frankly I frankly don't recommend replacing your entire body with a machine, especially with a cheap one. Aside from the basic issues such as vulnerability to damage and creaky noises, cheap pathetics bodies compromise too much. You're basically giving up all the joys of life. Can you imagine? You can't taste anything when you eat delicious food. You can't feel the softness and coziness of a good bed. You can't feel anything get stuck in your body, be it a piece of paper or a knife. The head remembers those feelings, but you can't experience them again. There are ways to overcome it, though. You could buy a desire stimulation chip and plug it in your brain, inject medications or use other methods. They're just absurdly expensive. You're better off saving up for a more expensive pathetic body if you really want your senses back. High quality price bodies come with sensory organs. As I always say, it's all about money in this world. What's your favorite food? That's the question I used to ask the most when I still had a human body. I love, I love eating. Talking about food was a huge delight for me. We would share each other's tastes and preferences and sometimes head to a restaurant for a meal just like that. But now my body's a machine, as you can see. I can't taste anything anymore. Thanks for pointing that out. Mo told me to stop dreaming about it. I still want to try more delicious foods though. Hot and flavorful, spicy and sweet, stuff like that. I guess this body is too cheap to restrain delusional thoughts like this. If we get more money and change our bodies to new ones, then maybe I'll be able to stop these thoughts from getting in the way of my work. 
the city consists of 25 nests and 25 districts of the back streets that surrounded those nests, and countless offices and syndicates that still reside in the back streets. You know what's a surefire way for a syndicate to make a name? You know what's a surefire way for a syndicate to make a name for itself during all the competitors? Among all the competitors? The simplest method is office raiding. You literally storm into an office and wreak havoc on it. You never know who will be the winner until you fight. It could stop at a good beating and one side surrendering it, but one side surrendering. But some syndicates raid offices out of pure boredom and kill everyone. Each syndicate has its own way of operation. It goes without saying that the syndicate has more fame to gain out of raiding a high-grade office filled with seasoned fixes, so the officers have to stay sharp at all times. But you also have to watch it. If you misjudge your opponent, you'll end up dead before you can try it. Mm. Ah, what kind of voice does this what, what kind of voice does this guy have? Let's go for this one, I suppose. Back when we were still part of a killer syndicate, we got a client asking us to hunt some crazed syndicate. They were shaking like a drenched rat as they came in. I suppose they were scared of places like this. They asked us to catch the wicked criminals kidnapping people in parts of the streets they live in. We had one question though. It's nice that they're giving us a job, but why ask a syndicate like ours instead of going to the Zwa or other offices that are better suited for handling the public safety issues? Then they said they did try to request an officer at first with the money they raised by their neighbors. But then the office asked for a ridiculous sum of money, claiming that there's much preparation that they need to take before they can uproot a whole syndicate. Poor fellow be begged for help, but the office personnel didn't even flinch. Well, money is the only thing that gets fixes moving, so that's understandable. And I think their friend recommended us to them while they were still looking for another way, if I remember it right. Introduced us as a trustworthy, introduced us as a trustworthy syndicate. So they came all the way to our hideout. Trustworthy syndicate. <laughs> it's a shame, really. I can still remember the client's head staring daggers at me, hanging from the top of a power pole. The syndicate paid us more cash. What could I do about it? We don't write official contracts or anything, so the highest bidder gets our favor. No use glaring at me like that, pal. We were told by our new client to hang their head and guts out in the streets to make an example of them. Those sick fucks even used some kind of singularity to keep them alive. Poor bastard. Should request an office in the first place somehow. Lord Gang Warfare. I mean, I guess that's at the kind of rank that we're at. I have a feeling as we ascend, we might start, like, running into people within companies absorbing some CEOs, but it seems that at the lower levels there's a lot of gang warfare. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, let's turn to title because it auto saves. And uh, let's bring us back to our book club screen. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah, this game's good. <laughs> oh, it's just so good. <laughs> yeah, this game's good. This game's sick. Goodness me. Goodness me. Yep. No, so uh, uh, what we'd like to do, just to to, root, to, to round things out uh, for the stream, uh, when we play these games, we go and play them for a couple of hours, and then we uh, think about the ideas. Thank you very much for the follow, Stoic. Um, we think about the ideas that we could kind of take away uh, to our own projects because I find as an artist, as a creator, uh, one of the ways that I make lots of interesting new things is to look at a wider range of stuff. And uh, there are definitely some interesting inspirations that I could take away from this, from, from games going forward. Um, but hey, hey, let's, let's, let's start with you, uh, Tom. What, what kind of, are there any kind of aspects about this? You're like, man, this is sick. This is gonna make me think about this for a while. Whether that's sort of story or design or anything. I sort of love the fact that the more you learn about the city, the kind of the worse it gets, which is very much that sort of thing that vibes with cosmic horror. Uh, mm. Whereas like everything's horrible, um, even like um, sort of the, like the basic day to day stuff. And then presumably the more you're going to start learning about um, 
and how things are getting sorry how things are getting revealed along the line and uh, all the rest of it because um, there's mm. a, there's a lot of foreshadowing uh, in the writing as well which it does very well uh, just dropping comments like at the start of that chapter um this is certainly bits i've got because i'm about only about well, only about mm. 10 hours into the game now so and certain things they've referenced early on and now starting to come up and it's like oh oh this is these guys we need to, we need to actually worry about this yeah no i i now that you bring that up i love the idea of using cosmic horror style storytelling to tell mm. stories about like corporations and mega conglomerates as an unknowable eldritch entity um yeah that's really cool uh that level of like hopelessness about it where it's like no oh, yep yeah, you've you've just learnt all this does this help you no you're still at the bottom of the <laughs> tiny insignificance and all yeah that, we have but... this knowledge but we're still infinite infant infinitesimally unimportant they like mm. that for sure for sure i am um, i think it does a reasonably interesting idea at making it so it's always nice when a uh games like make systems also reflect to the narratives mm. um, i always assumed uh before i beat near um not automata um gestalt uh, i always assumed that just near gestalt was about stories um because all of the bosses in that game are named after fairy tales um you're beating up monsters made out of script and extracting words from them and then using those words to power yourself and that felt really interesting you know you're, you're kind of like a, inscribing yourself with fiction to kind of become strong and it turns out in the grand scheme of things that near near just thought is not quite about that that's a bit of a misdirect <laughs> uh but i always found that really cool i really like the idea of kind of like harnessing stories to make yourself more powerful in those kind of ways and uh, as a result we got tabletop rpg PG campaigns like Arcornicore. uh Arcornicore is a tabletop rpg campaign run in a city of mist and void heart symphony simultaneously that you can find vods of both on my twitch and on my youtube account um the bigger people are even bigger monsters than the actual monsters more often than not this oh, is very yeah. true this is very very true this is very true of both um lobotomy corporation and this um are in many ways less monstrous ethically mm. than the uh, corporations that use ensnare exploit um, I can type yes 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 I know I know spell it correctly mm yeah no i mean it's 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 not so much subtext it's just text i i don't i don't i don't i don't think these games either lobotomy corporation or or um uh library of ruin are particularly subtle in what they're about honestly like i was talking to uh, tom about this the other day as i was kind of like seeing more of lobotomy corporation played um that pretty much like a good 25 percent of like the monster backstories that you can read are more about hr violations within the bottom <laughs> corporation than about the monster themselves um there's one for nothing there that its backstory is mostly filled with nothing there attacking a person and then uh that person's colleague calling for emergency suppression control and emergency suppression control is like uh, could you state the ID number of the person being horrendously mauled? And it just takes so long, then eventually the end of that short story ends with the, the, the suppression team being like, somebody will be sent to your way shortly. What's the current situation? And the guy's like, they're dead. They're dead now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very, it's very on the nose. Very, very on the nose. Um, it's, if, there, if there was one thing that I kind of really want to take away from that, I mean, I love the style of this game. I really do i really do enjoy the style of this game and it's kind of like commitment to its kind of like a neon 1920s vibe i do enjoy that i don't know whether that's necessarily an idea to take away although maybe you know um uh, as a as a personal note look into the uh aesthetic idea typing live is a 
crime. Um, if, uh, neon 1920s. Actually, actually, there is a game coming up that I might want to run this style for. Um, there is a... The title is really long. I'm going to retrieve it because the book is good. I'll show the book on camera. Hold on. Also means I get the name correct because the name is quite long. Eh. Uh, it's called "I'm sure you're all wondering why I've gathered you here this evening." Is the is the name of the book, uh, uh, and it's basically designed to tell stories like uh, "Haunting on Hill House." If you ever watched that movie, or like the board game that has a really similar name but not quite. The betrayal of murder on Haunted Hill. I can't remember the exact. Yeah, yeah. You know the one I mean. Yeah. Um, where you are all guests invited to a mansion where the proprietor of the mansion has died. And then uh, if you are the last person alive on the other side of it, then you get to inher inherit the winnings. And so it's all about kind of like exploring this mansion where you discover its dark truths and also stabbing the other members who are visiting in the back. Cool game. Cool game. I am. Um, was uh logan jenkins the designer of the game um i was talking to him about tabletop rpg design on his podcast and he was like i want to make a game and then over the course it turned from a one pager to a full kick-started book uh i actually have a a story in here um or like a scenario in here uh, that is supposed to be like a retro future 1920s deal so actually i might be taking a lot of visual inspirations from library of ruina uh, for the stream layout for it, um, which will be really good. Uh, keep an, if you're if you're listening to this and you're the kind of person who likes um, appearing on streamed tabletop RPGs, I tend to do a lot of open castings these days. So hey hey, if you're interested or maybe uh, appearing on the Neon Caster Twitch channel and uh, being part of a tabletop RPG, go check out my Twitter handle down there at Phantomart10. Yeah, 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 sick. Um, Will says, uh, just got back. The idea of cyberpunk doesn't have to ape the aesthetics of cyberpunk media is legit. Yeah, I think that's a really good thing to kind of take over, take to the, the kind of like final idea uh, what cyberpunk is to this game. And uh, cyberpunk doesn't need to have the uh, quote unquote traditional visual aesthetics of 80s cyberpunk it's more about the use of technology and the power struggles it causes and it's a good thing to remind ourselves of that because you don't necessarily need to do the all shiny chrome bullshit you know it doesn't necessarily need to be that at all but i think on the other side of it cyberpunk is literally just kind of like um uh at every um i guess tier of human society there can be an extremely bleak and unending uh, I guess violence for violence inflicted for survival. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Yeah, no, that 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 gels well, I think. Especially because what we've seen so far, we've not we've not seen the upper echelons of the people in the city yet, but just at the lowest level, the degree of which their entire lives are hierarchical right down to all of them starting their own companies because they have to you know they may not be media they may not be like mega corporations like the people from on high but they had to start companies of just even roland is a company of one person mm. in a different setting he might sardonically call himself an entrepreneur after all he is a fan of linkedin get that bread <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah 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 i really like it's a good game it's a good game, fam. Go play it. Go play it. It was like, what, 15 quid? 
Yeah, yeah, I had like 10 percent off at least on launch. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to when it comes to launch games, it's always uh, those kind of circumstances of being able to get in on the ground floor. It has very recently released in English. It's been beta for a while and been in Korean for a fair fit, for a fair bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I definitely recommend. Definitely mm. recommend. I think I'll be return. I'm, I might well return to it on stream later. Not necessarily a um, like where I am now because I have a feeling I'm going to be rinsing some time. Um, but I uh, but I might return to it later when I know that I'm running into something good. Anyway, uh, let's wrap up the stream and raid somebody. A friend of mine, uh, Captain Hurricane, who is an adorable hedgehog pilot and racing driver, is currently gunning for affiliate. Uh, so they need like all the support that they can kind of get in terms of like views and calls of support. So uh, if everybody's down for it, I'm gonna go raid my friend Captain Hurricane, and uh, please go and give them uh, well wishes. Uh, their spelling is a little funky. There we go. I'm gonna start that raid. So they're playing Diddy Kong Racing right now. Yes, absolutely. He's actually really good at Diddy Kong Racing too. Okay, I have been your androgynous AI game show host from the future, Nathan Blades. Uh, this has been the Neon Castle Twitch channel, and we'll see you real soon. <laughs>